Hello, precious people of God. Trust you are doing well by the grace of God. We thank God for yet another day to spend time with Him, another day to commune with Him. I want us to take a short exercise, and that is, I want you to click on that like button to help spread this good news abroad. I want you to help us share this good news, and that YouTube will also recommend this channel, this video to others, and they will also be a blessing. Also, let's take a short reading from Job chapter 38, verses 12. Saints, has thou commanded the morning since thy days, and then caused the day spring to know its place? Now, this tells us of the great opportunities, of the great blessings we enjoy as children of God when we speak into our day. And so, it is what we are about to do. Open your heart, be alert, prepare your spirit as we receive inspiring messages from the man of God, Apostle Joshua Selman. Also, if you are new here, hit on that subscribe button for us and then on that notification bell. Keep sharing this message abroad. Keep sharing on Facebook. Keep sharing on YouTube to invite others to join us as we bless the world. You are a blessing. Thank you. While you're seated on your seat, can you just begin to pray in the spirit? As we build capacity to receive, whether you're inside, whether you're outside, it doesn't make any difference. Go ahead and pray. Shala Baruka Sude Rishi. Libana Sotia Hassana Malagoshi Alamaros. Shala Brada Gatika Soda Dada Gatianosh. Skata Banda De Shade Halakosi Adabarabish. Lord, our spirits cry to you tonight. Skanda bende kasana balahasi de baku shapriya takatos. Shene meleto kusodo prondo sene baladabash. Go ahead and pray. Shene bakato sana balata shene melehasana di alagata boshi. Brande kato samana shana balahasi de balakatos. Si brande ke parus kabarundi ashana baladash. We open up our spirits. We connect to the heavens tonight. Shambra na teso mahashala bakatori adagata brasi adagata. Kabarando zegede shalabaruta sude behati adabush. Lige de masana marato shapri agata balatos. It's a cry from your spirit. You are not just attending a service. There is a cry. Go ahead and pray. It's part of the conference. You are positioning your spirit man to receive very mighty things. Sede melekato sabanda kashala badakari adabadosa. The Bible says the spirit is willing, always willing. Don't mind the weakness of your flesh. Your spirit is willing. Samana kato shala badakato. Shene kepar ko sana malato shebre deke to sadabala shagada baka to sabande shene malaka to sha rakata baka tabara taba shadabala taba shede bela de kosh man de kata pa sodo pa si de malata si anaka to shaladia shene makora to shede baka to shamala dakaria datas. Let us hear your voice tonight. Mandi katos kabande ratos de manasige de balakatos ariada katabash. Sebros kamarande shele marakatos. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. One of the one of the characteristics of a true church is that you must find an entrance from that church to the gates of heaven. When Jacob in chapter 28 of Genesis the Bible says that he was tired and he got a place placed a stone there and the Bible says he laid down to rest and whilst he rested the Bible says that in his dream he saw a ladder 
and that ladder himself was Christ connecting that stone to the heavens and when he got up this was his testimony he said surely the Lord was in this place and I knew not and he says this is the house of God number one two this is the gate of heaven if the gate of heaven cannot be found in a place then it is not the house of God there must be an access point a system of routing from every church to touch the heavens if that is not possible in any assembly regardless of what what kind of dexterity is around it it is not the house of God if it is the house of God there must be a gateway from that house that leads men to heaven he said this is the house of God this is the gate of heaven I truly believe that this place is not just a building but that there is a system through the covenant of sacrifice that affords the Holy Spirit the opportunity to take us tonight to a trajectory of the Spirit hallelujah praise the Lord we'll just look at two scriptures I'll begin tonight just for a few minutes and then we'll pray I already sense a very very heavy anointing in this place and I want us to be very sensitive hallelujah I like us to be sensitive as I teach because even while I stepped in I began to sense the ministry of angels and the moment that happens I know that the Lord is already moving to touch people so I want you to be sensitive you are not only hearing and the spirit entered into me he first told me to stand up but I didn't have the strength and then he used words to transfer the spirit and with it the ability to stand up he said and the spirit entered into me when he spake the ministration of the spirit is more than the hearing ear there is an interaction words are just vehicles that convey those essence the spirit essence at the end of the meeting you will be surprised that you did not mentally assimilate anything exactly but the essence entered your spirit and as the days unfold you will begin to see the reality of that encounter spiritual things are more than the realm of the mind there are certain times that the realities must be crystallized in your spirit first your mind will catch up later on so you will be surprised that you can finish a meeting and know you were blessed and frankly speaking you may not be able to articulate intelligently the details the full import of what you receive but then the days and the weeks that will come will show that you really received something that's the ministration of the spirit hallelujah praise the lord let's start with exodus 25 The secret of great men recorded in scripture the very one event in their lives that launched them to the realms the dimensions in the spirit that made them useful for the kingdom um, every single one of them without exception had seasons in their lives when they went through moments of encounters everybody see after me encounters I want to talk very briefly about encounters because I think that our generation is losing out on the pricelessness the pricelessness the value the the the, the power of encounters it is the reason why many people do not have faith regardless of the lavish teachings about faith because you see according to scripture faith was not supposed to be a difficult subject that should be taught in series upon series the volumes of teaching acts the teachings that have come are a revelation that we have not gotten something are we together now those who taught about faith in the bible were not very learned people but they were people who had encounters let me tell you this nothing will replace the value and the excellency of encounters the bible says but i know whom i have believed i know not that i've been told i know whom i have believed he said and as a result of that knowing i am persuaded 
I'm not trying to believe. I'm not trying to hope. I'm not jacking myself in some mental propositions hoping to believe. Most of these things we do, though well-meaning, will never give us the results. This is a conference. Is God blessing us already? So I, I think that one of the challenges with the body of Christ is that we have a lot of spiritual propositions with no track record to validate them. So we have a lot of things we know God can do. We know God can heal. We know God can bless. We know God can lift. We know God can prosper. And we teach people to believe that God can do it. But the ability to compel that dimension of Him to be revealed in the midst of His people and supply that desire is where the missing link is that one is not a product of oratory that one is not just a product of educational prowess that's a product of encounter is god speaking to us jesus met with a very strange woman while he walked upon the earth and the bible tells us that she had a conversation with him and later discerning that he was a prophet and then the Bible says she ran, left her, whatever she was doing, and gathered the people in the city and said, Come see a man. Come see a man who has told me everything that I've done. And the Bible says the people came not because they knew Jesus. They came because they were invited. But when they came and they interacted with him, they said, Madam, we now believe not just because you invited us. We have had an encounter. We have met him. Are we together it is very costly to try to represent a god you do not know because pharaoh will ask you questions who sent you it is the challenge that many of us have faced we have attempted to confront the gates of hell just because the bible says that believers have authority and should confront the gates of hell you see until the spirit of god opens your eyes to scripture you may not see the hidden mysteries behind certain statements and you will take them sometimes just like that and return back with casualties there are people who have died as believers went to certain homes to dismantle shrines just because the bible says i've given you authority over snakes and scorpions but they have not stayed to be taught the dynamics of that operation though well-meaning they got up and returned back with casualties it takes more than just reading scripture it is the entrance of the word, not just the looking at it not just the assimilation the entrance there is an interaction of the spirit upon that word that gives light are we together now encounters are very powerful the ultimate goal of encounters is to produce conviction that's it the real secret behind our exploits is not so much about our versatility in knowledge as it were the real secret is our depth of persuasion in who god is and the irrefutability of his principles and none of us is old enough experienced enough or smart enough intellectually speaking to get to that state in the spirit it will take an encounter to bring you to a level of persuasion unbendableness where you know that this dimension of god is a dimension that has been supplied to me through encounter i'm not trying to believe are we together now yes there's a lot to talk about but I, I just want to I'm just starting somewhere with us the first thing I want you to know is that the purpose of encounters is to create conviction not necessarily the message that comes from them conviction the human spirit has been so deadened by reason of the nature of the flesh it will take an impact an experience that is higher than every other event that has happened in your life to make your spirit that alive to god are we together 
now we have seen many things in our lives we have seen accidents we have heard the cries of children we have seen guns we have seen all kinds of things so those things don't surprise us and when God begins to propose his ways we join God in the midst of those many events in our lives and so there is nothing special about him and what he's proposing to us it will take an encounter to push God and his purposes to become a priority there is an event that must happen in your life so impactful that that dimension of God becomes your message not because you learned it it's an encounter that drives you the Bible says when you read Psalm 24 the Bible says there is a generation whose mandate is to seek the God of Jacob. Are we together? I'm just trying to articulate myself so that we can see how we can make sense within a very short time. That there is the God of Jacob. Now listen very carefully. The Bible says a generation will seek God in the similitude of Jacob so Jacob becomes a portrait of encounters are we together now you want to understand that scripture you have to go and study the life of Abraham Isaac and Jacob as at the time Jacob was walking he already knew the God of Abraham and the God of Isaac but there was no encounter in his life to add the names of God that a generation would study as at that time we did not know the God of Jacob and the full import of what that dimension revealed you see when you hear the God of this the God of Isaac is not the God of Abraham is the same God but the dimensions are different when you invoke the God of Abraham there is there is a context that that revelation captures when you invoke the God of Isaac there is a context it captures so God's design for every believer is that your lifespan should be long enough for you to name God through your experience there should be a name that your your work gives God so that the generations after you will study are we together now there was a kind of business Abraham did with God that made God say I am the God of Abraham when he appeared to Jacob he called himself the God of Abraham so when you call on the God of Abraham he's compelled to move based on a covenant that forces him to move in a dimension the Bible lets us know that Hagar began to cry alongside her young lad two of them were crying of thirst and the Bible says only the voice of the young lad was heard in heaven a woman is crying a baby is crying heaven only hears the voice of the baby because he came out of the loins of Abraham God was not hearing the baby he was hearing Abraham then there is the God of Isaac that's a dimension on his own now it was left for Jacob to use his life and create a name that a generation will study had he not gone through that experience we would not know that it was possible to encounter God that way this is the generation of them that seek thy face O Jacob or O God of Jacob the first time Jacob had an encounter Jacob was not prepared the Bible says he said the Lord was in this place and I knew not the second time God would appear to Jacob Jacob was in a state of frustration notice that the Bible says that every time God would come to Jacob it was at a night time there is something about the night time and encounters there is a level of frustration and discomfort and pain that is necessary for men to know God I know you may not like what I'm saying but men don't meet God in the daytime there is something about the nighttime a season where everything that should work stops working the Bible says in that frustration Jacob was about to meet his elder brother Esau whom he had defrauded of a birthright it could cost him his life the Bible says he dismissed his wife separated his cattle when he was alone then the Bible says a man a stranger came and said Jacob let's try it again you missed me the first time and Jacob held on to him and there was a wrestle notice 
that God never said, Jacob, how are you? The moment Jacob was about to be lifted, the issue of name came. What is your name? What is your name? And he said, I am Jacob. He said, no. You have done something that has changed your name. From today henceforth, you will be called Israel. Listen carefully. He said, for as a prince, you have fought with God and you have prevailed. Something about your hunger made you to hold on to God. You broke a lot of spiritual rules and your hunger still excused you. For that reason, your name has been changed. And then the Bible says that the, the angel of the Lord himself said, Release me for the day break it. He said, I won't let you go. This desperation must release something to my destiny. And then the Bible says, as soon as that encounter was over, he said the sun arose again and he called the name of the place Peniel. Peniel means the face of God. For I have seen God face to face and my life has been spared. The, the, that, that, that impact was so much that God's covenant people today are not called Abrahamites. They are not called Isaacites. They are called Israelites. Not just the followers of Abraham. It is true they say we have Abraham as our father. But the depth of encounter that Isaac and Israel had. He made God to name a nation after him. The Israelites. The very Israel of God. Are we together? Genesis 25. Exodus I meant to say. Just two verses very quickly. There is a location where God meets with men. My assignment tonight is to show you. God is everywhere, but he does not meet men everywhere. No. God is everywhere, but he does not meet men everywhere. Are we together? A generation of young people have very interesting understandings about marriage when a gentleman wants to ask a lady out have you ever seen anybody asking a lady out where the train is moving and he just said let me quickly use this opportunity to just tell you i love you the lady will look at him and say wow that's i really see that you are not interested in an answer atmosphere matters to that encounter that gentleman wants an answer from that lady he has labored to rehearse and plan and he's, he, he intends, he means business with her. So he not only focuses on her, he first focuses on the atmosphere. Because he knows that the atmosphere has the ability to influence the answer that comes to him. Intimacy is atmosphere dependent. Not every spiritual climate is conducive for encounters. Exodus chapter 25 We'll start from verse 20 Are we there? And the cherubim Shall stretch forth their wings On high Covering the mercy seat with their wings And their faces Shall look one to another Towards the mercy seat Shall the faces of the cherubims be And thou shalt put The mercy seat above Upon the ark and in the ark shalt thou put the testimony that I shall give thee. 22. And there I will meet with thee. And I will commune with thee. What is the location? Above the mercy seat. Between the two cherubims. That's where you will find me. Look up. <laughs> mm. This is a spiritual location. That if you can construct that thing, you will find me. He said two things. Above the mercy seat, between the cherubims that face themselves, if you can find that location, I will meet with you there and I will commune with you. There are other locations where I will meet with you, but I will not commune with you. But if you want communion, the requirement is that it must be above the mercy seat and between the shelvings there is a way you can meet me at the outer court I will meet with you and I will give you an information 
there is a way you can push through when you stand at the outer court there are things everything from the outer court the inner court the most holy place is all christ but different dimensions of him there are things you will find in the outer court you can't get in the inner i mean um you get in the inner court you can't get in the outer court is that true the various descriptions are the dimensions of god that are affordable at every level when jesus said i am the way the truth and life it was a description in the similitude of the tabernacle are we together now there are dimensions of god that if your christian experience stops at the level of the outer court you have found christ you have entered the door but there are limited dimensions of him that are affordable for you if you want to push deeper then you must go beyond the outer court the moment you enter the inner court the first thing you are going to meet is the 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 table of shoe bread and then you will meet the seven lampstands that means that the protocol of encountering christ in the outer court is not the same in the inner court there are things you can take casually at the outer court but the moment you are stepping into the inner court there is a greater demand for meticulousness are we together the last thing you encounter before you get to the most holy place is the altar of incense the altar of incense is the ministry of prayer that is the authorized it is the closest object it is the closest spiritual posture to the most holy place the moment you enter the inner court you meet the seven lampstands if you cannot encounter the seven lampstands then the the table of shoe bread will not be useful it is the encounter with the lampstands that give value to the kind of bread are we together now you can access the bread without the lampstands and have religion but it will take an encounter with the spirit to make the world alive for you so if you want to have access to the ministry of the holy spirit and the word of god then you move beyond the nominal christianity that is found at the outer court is God helping us to understand? Many believers think all there is to the Christian experience is just to get born again. But the Bible describes for us that there are different levels. And with those levels, the same Christ becomes different things. At the outer court, he is the brazen altar. The altar that you can hold on to one of the four horns of the altar describes the gospel of salvation. The substitutionary sacrifice of the Christ you can stop there knowing just that and believing that is all there is and have a great limitation whereas God is still doing business with men but there can be people who can be hungry and say Lord thank you for this initial experience but I know there is more the moment you step into the inner court the first person you encounter is the Holy Spirit the seven candlesticks when you encounter the ministry of the holy spirit he is the one who introduces you to the word trying to understand the word without the holy spirit is a waste of time the bible without the holy spirit is a theological compendium of controversies are you getting what i'm saying a theological compendium of controversies scriptures supposedly violating themselves because not every part of this is the word of god this is a compendium of a lot of historic details but there are details that were captured inspired by the spirit that part is what the bible calls the word of god the historical parts were all left for our learning so that we through the comfort of scripture may find hope demons spoke in this bible donkeys spoke in this bible men in their backsliding state spoke in this bible not every verse is directly applicable it must be arranged by the spirit of god to reflect the character of the christ don't just say if i find it in the bible i will do it you can bring witchcraft out of the bible it's true <laughs> the challenge with many people and well-meaning preachers is that we ignore the seven lampstands and we are from the outer court but we are attempting to claim we have touched the seven lampstands so we bring a lot of theological exegesis that may be well-meaning well constructed intellectually presented but they are in the absence of the spirit 
the formation of the tabernacle is necessary remember the entire journey is to see his face so i'm showing you the movement the way it starts and then you encounter the shoe bread that bread that gives life and then the altar of incense do you know why you must encounter the bread before the altar because that incense you see is a sacrifice you must go in the strength of the bread you have eaten otherwise you cannot stand he tapped elijah and said eat the journey you are about to take is far what you need now is to eat and the bible says you went in the strength of that bread 40 days and the moment you begin to engage the altar of incense then something begins to happen notice that between the altar of incense and the most holy place there is a mysterious material that is called the veil now i know that christ has torn the veil but let me teach you something powerful about the veil that many people do not know in this kingdom everything that carries glory is covered behind the veil everything is a spiritual system the the most important organs in your body are covered we call them vital organs is that true your heart your lungs they are so fragile they are glorious because your human living depends on them more glorious than your hand and your eyes are these organs everything that carries glory in the kingdom never comes open it comes veiled because it will take sacrifice to show who is worthy of opening it when they went to get a wife for isaac when they got rebecca the bible says the moment rebecca spotted isaac what happened she failed herself because here was a man who was going to look at her and she believed that she was a woman of noble virtue and she failed herself let me tell you this if all of your life is seen by everybody is a sign that you are cheap in the spirit a major part of your life must be behind if you're a man of god here please hear me i give you a big secret if all of you is all that is seen by members then you are not going to last your your expository ministry should be a minute part of your work the greater portion of the ministry is the burning of incense it is the secret that brings power to men we live in a generation where there is an obsession to be known is god blessing us tonight there is an obsession to be recognized and don't get me wrong there is a place for honor but this obsession you see is an activity of the flesh is an attempt to demean your spiritual value hmm. everything that is glorious in the kingdom is first veiled it takes your passion and your press for the veil to be taken away when you buy an expensive phone do they just give it to you and say oga you pay two hundred thousand for a phone here you see it's original no look at the meticulousness of the packaging sometimes you say why did they have to go through that it is because they want you to appreciate the value of what is inside it's a spiritual principle so I, i'm sure are you getting this if you get this you will see why getting the presence of god is not cheap no you want to see the face of god there is a price it's not a gift there is jesus our savior available to everybody by grace but there is the god that your experience will give that one is a price it's a journey the the covenant of jacob's grandfather could not automatically reveal god to him it took a personal press for him to create a testimony by himself is god speaking to us at the transfiguration out of all the people that walked with jesus the 12 the 72 only three were given the privilege of having that transfiguration the glorified christ in heaven among all of the disciples only one had the privilege to see him john had seen him in his earthly walk now he was in the isle of patmos banished and the bible records that all of a sudden he said i was in the spirit in the lord's day and all of a sudden my eyes were open what do you think he was doing there he was burning incense 
the altar of prayer began to push him to the edge and he pressed through the veil and all of a sudden I was in the spirit on the Lord's day if many people understand that prayer is a ladder that leads men to encounters it's not just a system to get breakthrough in the spirit prayer is a weapon the closest weapon that helps you to break through the barriers of the veil and then you see his face then he says i saw one who looked like the son of man this was not the man i saw on earth oh. and now i saw him i saw the lampstands and when i saw the lampstands in the midst of them i saw one his hair was as white as wool etc etc and then he began to speak he gave john an information that no other person had are we together now he began to teach john that there were many churches but there are seven that are prophetic within that season seven churches that never believed they were related but he told them the formation of these seven churches is what controls my agenda on earth within that time he said john right this privilege i'm giving to you is because you have seen my face there are certain informations about god you will never know just hearing about him it's an information that until you meet him an encounter is not just reading your bible and understanding alone an encounter remember the bible says that the scriptures testify of me the scriptures are supposed to lead you to a person if your bible study does not lead you to a person you are not doing anything anything more than reading a quran you are not doing anything more than reading a some zodiac mantra and all of that the scriptures lead us to a person i am the way you follow that way you will find the truth you study that truth it will lead you to a person who can give you life that's the progression it is first the way then you meet reality the spirit of truth and when he comes he will guide you into all truth he will begin to show you and then you will encounter him that encounter is what brands you and gives you a message that encounter is where your message comes from that encounter is where your ministry comes from because with that encounter will come the anointing to prove you met that dimension of god above the mercy seat below the cherubims if you can create that location in your life i will meet with you and then i will commune with you when you back up to chapter 19 the bible shows us that god wanted to reveal himself to the nation of israel and god gave moses specific instructions he said go and tell the people for three days that they sanctify themselves because i am about to show up i will come i want to reveal myself to the people so that they will believe you moses moses you know me you have seen me but these people think you are pretending every time you say you have met me so let me give them a similitude of that experience so that it can create conviction in them do you know the reason why our christian experiences are not very strong we don't have encounters we have informations but no encounter as powerful as john the baptist was he didn't have an encounter so john the baptist ordains jesus and then in the height of his frustration having been told that jesus was the lamb of god having been trained in the wilderness for many years john is under serious frustration and john sends a message are you the messiah or should we expect you would do would you expect that from john that's the same way a preacher who has been preaching for 30 years can turn and say do i really believe in jesus after the merits of the crusades if i believe in jesus where was he when this was happening where was that when this was happening but there is a way you can have an encounter that you said though he slay me yet will i trust him i have i have known him is like occult i have been initiated beyond i can't lie that i do not know this dimension of him that you encounter him as a healer and even if you see hundred dead people hundred sick people die in your presence you can't deny that experience is too small to corrupt the power of the encounter you've had 
Jesus, you're the cup that will run dry. For nothing in this world can satisfy. Oh, Jesus, you're the cup that won't run dry. That's what happens when you encounter him. Nothing in this world will satisfy. Yes, you are the cup that won't run dry. Treasure of my heart and of my soul. In my weakness, you are merciful. Redeemer of my past and present wrongs. Listen to this part. You're the holder of my future takes to come. Yeah, your presence is heaven to me. This is not church. This is not religion. Your presence is heaven to me. Hallelujah. John the Baptist didn't have an encounter. And when life pushed him, John the prophet, the man who ordained and commissioned Jesus to ministry, now turned to join the devil and say, are you truly the sent one? Remember, the only other person who asked that kind of question was Satan. If you are the son of God, now the person who ordained him is manifesting in the similitude of Satan. The pressures of life have a way of pushing you. It will take more than Bible study to survive to this world. You will be confronted with challenges that will rattle your face to the core. To the point that other people will even feel for you because they don't know what answer you should give. But a man who has met God like Job will say God is greater. Greater. I wish I can tell you you can have all the answers to life's challenges and life's problems. Sometimes God is mysteriously shocking. When you expect him to speak, he keeps quiet. Because no man voted him into power. Lord, why did my mother who loved you so much die and heavens keep quiet? The only way you draw strength is the encounter you've had. And if you don't have any encounter, you will be surprised that all your Bible studies will evaporate. I read that since I was young and now I am old, I have never seen that. No, 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 no. That's somebody's testimony. Get your own. Get your own. You are reciting some. There was a condition that that man was that made him to testify that. We copy a lot of things without knowing the depth from which they came from. This was a man who had lost everything, boils all over him. And his wife said, I love you, but curse God and die. Reduce my problem for me. And Job looked at her and said, Though he slay me. Here's what he said. All the days of my appointed, hold on. Who told him that every evil has an appointed time? Do you have that revelation about God? That every time you see the night time, you smile. And they say, why? Because night doesn't stay forever. It's a revelation that gives you confidence. You have learned by doing business with God. That every time you see darkness, no money for rent, no food. People look at you and say, sister, you are a beautiful lady. You know what to do. You say, no. I have a message came from my encounter that weeping endures for a night. And so you stand gazing at the sky. They say, what are you looking for? You say, at the slightest manifestation of dawn. Because when I see dawn, I know that an end comes. Every manipulation of witchcraft waits for the mystery of the sun and the moon. And so every time the moon is giving way to the sun, there are powers that cannot operate again. I begin to rejoice because of understanding. Many believers are weak. We are weak not because we don't go to church, but because we have not pushed to the realms of encounters. 
there are things that I have seen in my life that will make me to never curse God. You've heard me say that I love Him. And it's not just because I'm speaking as a preacher. You wait until I tell you my story and I tell you where God is bringing me from. Then you will know that whatever God does today has nothing to do with my love and my relationship. I've gone through the furnace of fire. And I know Him. Listen. Let me give you one secret tonight and then we'll pray. Are, we, are you ready? The official way to know God is in the midst of pain and challenges. Write it down. <laughs> oh. Pray in the spirit while you are writing it because some of you will not agree. Just You just write it and let God help us to be mature. Treasure of my heart and of my soul. Keep writing and just listen to me. Listen to this part. In my weakness, you are merciful. You don't need mercy until your weakness is revealed. Remember I told you how to meet God. Above the mercy seat. Situations in your life must hit you and bring you to a point where you acknowledge that I am weak. That's the only condition for the mercy of God to work for you. Listen, you will never encounter God if you don't encounter His mercy. The mercy of God never comes to people who are still sufficient in themselves. So God will allow orchestrations around your life to beat down your pride until you come to a point where you say, Lord, I'm anointed, but this one is more than my power. And God says, you are inviting my mercy. Let me show you how people know God in this kingdom. I'm a man of God. You will never know him that way. The first time he appeared to Jacob, Jacob was a man of God with no challenges. And God said, no, you can't know me this way. And he allowed him. He went to the house of Laban and suffered and was defrauded. Jacob cried and asked questions. By the time God will appear again, he was broken enough to have that encounter. The Bible says, blessed are they that hunger and thirst. You won't believe that I've not even started my message. We'll just leave it and continue tomorrow. But I just want to show you one key tonight. Don't waste your pain. You are wasting an opportunity to know God. Don't waste your disappointment. We live in a kingdom where many people say, if you know God, why is this happening to you? Tell them to keep quiet. There is an irrefutable spiritual system designed for saints to become men of power. Listen, no one encounters power without power. The way to the throne is the cross. You will never arrive the throne jumping the cross. I wish I can tell you, you will just receive an impartation and laugh and go. No. Those situations will break your pride. You will sit at a point where you, your only prayer is your tears. It's only your tears that will be able to speak to God. It's not lack of spirituality. Jesus got there. On his way to the cross, he passed through Gethsemane. Your Jesus. Your Jesus. As I'm talking, some of you now are already seeing that so what is happening in my life I thought it was because I was backsliding men of God told me I don't love God I, I was surprised all of a sudden the carryover just came I I'm an anointed man all of a sudden my membership just reduced the more I'm praying all of a sudden the gentleman said he will not marry me I have kept myself what is the handwriting on the wall I came to interpret it to you God is luring you he wants to introduce his mercy but his mercy will never never come to people who are sufficient in themselves treasure of my heart and of my soul listen very carefully it's in my weakness you are merciful when you pass through that, you will not open your mouth to criticize any man. Because you know that we are all products of God's mercy. Ah. Redeemer of my past and present wrong. You're the holder of my future days to come. Listen. There was a time in my life I fasted, I prayed, no open door, no breakthrough. No, ah, come on. 
Don't let anybody lie to you that is just. Ask every man of God who is honest with you. They will tell you that the anointing only comes on scars. The anointing doesn't come on fresh skin. There must be a scar, a testament of endurance in the spirit. He said, let no man trouble me. I have my scars. I didn't jump classes in the spirit. Listen. You are listening to me right now everywhere. You are writing a name of God through your pain. There is something you have gone through. And God is saying, don't waste it. I will be glorified in this. When you pass through it, in that experience, listen. You see, there are, let me have, let me have one young lady come here, please. Let me just, you. anybody, please come quickly. Anyone, choir, you are not a lady now, gentlemen. Come, come, can you come up? This lady can be, I apologize if you are somebody's wife, just an example. Are we together? Now watch this. This young lady, it's easy for her to come to church and they say God is faithful, God is mighty. There is no, her experience has not captured the need for that revelation. Her life is too innocent to understand that dimension. She's never been disappointed. They've always paid school fees for her. Everything has been rosy. So when they say, let's cry for message, oh God, pastor, don't waste our time. And God says, don't worry. There is already a curriculum that will force her to need that sermon. You continue to walk. One day she enters a relationship with a gentleman. And all of a sudden she turns to young ladies and says, ah, this thing is so easy. What are you praying for a life partner for like this? Keep going. One day... When she has announced to everybody that she wants to get married, then the gentleman says, I'm not doing it again. And you allow the lady, all of the supposed shame and embarrassment, brings her to the point where she will now join you to sing that song. Now she has an experience that forces her to need the mercy of God. The mercy of God is not for sinners. It's not just an attribute when you have seen, maybe like done something wrong. The mercy of God is the system that authorizes his presence to meet you. I'm showing you, remember we are discussing Exodus 25, that it is above, if the mercy seat is not there, I am not there. If your life is too innocent of an experience that needs me, you will not find me. Treasure of my heart and of my soul. It's in my weakness you are merciful. Hallelujah. So this lady comes to a point where she's broken. Ordinarily when she comes to church to kneel down and worship, she's one. Ah, there's a guy looking at me somewhere. You are too alive for the mercy of God. But there is a way that she will return for service that night. Unusually early. Number one. That's a sign that mercy is about to come. Number two. They raise a song that has nothing to do with kneeling down. And the lady is already crying and rolling. And you want to quickly touch her. God says don't you dare touch her. Leave her. It is that condition I'm looking for. There is a name for it. It's called a broken and a contrite spirit. It's a posture in the spirit that cries for help from heaven. Are we together? And the lady comes and says, Lord, I know that I am beautiful. But now I have a confession. Every time they say a man can receive nothing except it is given. The truth is I never believed it. Because I knew that my beauty was something to write home about. But right now in sincerity, I acknowledge that you are the giver of everything. My encounter through pain has revealed to me that the race is not to the swift. And the battle is... Um, you are no longer reciting scripture. Your life is writing something about God. Tomorrow, when this lady is counseling another proud young lady who will not listen, she will tell her, my dear, am I ugly? She says, no ma. She says, sit down. Let me give you a story. In 1971, I was not always this humble. I used to make noise just like you. But something happened to me. Some of you, it is because of your pain that you came for this meeting. Or the ordinary you will never come for this meeting. Yeah. It's in my weakness you are merciful. 
have you ever had a challenge in your life that you sat down outside and not even mosquito could stop you that's what pain let me tell you those are useful experiences pastors let's be careful how we help people lest we rob people of an experience that should lead them to the mercy of god there are times that someone is so broke god is about to give him an encounter as jehovah jireh you want to quickly come and help him god says leave him this man will never believe that there is seed time and harvest because he has been receiving harvest from seeds he didn't sow so in his theology he believes that you are just making noise leave him i know my mother will send money for me in two weeks and one month nothing happens i know my other uncle will help me and you just hear that the uncle has gone abroad i know that as soon as i graduate this uncle will help me and you hear that he has resigned then like jacob all that you have you must dismiss them he had to tell the wives i love you but now go you will interrupt my encounter all my cattle my possessions the bible says when he was alone do you know what it means for a man to be alone it means everything you put your strength and confidence on god brings you to a point where you know that they are wonderful but they are not as needed as him the jealousy of god will keep pushing everything that tries to be him in your life until you are left alone then he comes when he comes to you he comes in majesty when he comes he finds out the bible says before god would talk to jacob he touched his thigh the strongest tissue in the human body the strongest part and said jacob you are too sufficient from now you will need a rod that rod is christ i need to touch you so that without me you cannot balance again it's a state of inadequacy forever i need to create a vacuum that only me can fulfill in your life you don't need a rod and staff to comfort you when you are complete but now i touch you so that my rod and my staff they will comfort you hear me brothers and sisters when it is time to cry cry honorably because that cry is leading you to the mercy seat don't worry about those who will look at you man of god and say i knew you were not called if you are called should you be like this and the ego you are being strong you organized the miracle meeting nobody was healed the the angry people who came sick looked at you and said i will write a newspaper about you i've always been suspecting you had the gods to write healing waves um, i'm looking for a title waves of healing from heaven guaranteed and the people came and in that pain do you know it is in that pain you will sit down and start reading all the healing scriptures in the bible not to preach and say lord i have come to a point where i must get this thing for real all of a sudden the mercy seat is calling him calling him until then you are just reading you studied kenneth e higgins books oh yes yes and all that is stories you must have a track record when jacob was alone my time is up but we are going to pray listen carefully many of us have not met him because you are not alone you are with your money you are with your certificate you are with your wife you are with your uncle you are with the complimentary cards of those who can help you and god says those things are driving my face when you come to a point where you know that if god does not help me there is nothing i can do you have captured my heart consume my heart with your love you have captured my heart hallelujah the mercy of god is not as cheap as many people make it sound just because his mercy does not need it, mean it is cheap there is a posture you must assume in the spirit for mercy to work for you god is speaking to someone here that in this conference you will find the anointing but God's assignment tonight is to circumcise us of our pride and everything that will not allow His mercy work in our lives. 
Oh, I will, I will get, I, I got a first class. You don't worry, a job is coming. One uncle told me something and God said, The race is not to the swift. There are people who graduated on their way going back home with their certificates. They died and were shredded into pieces. Many of us are ashamed of our pain. Many of us are ashamed of our stories. Can you allow your pain tonight invite the mercies of God? Who taught you that great people don't cry? Who taught you? One of the four living creatures that reflect the glory of God in the throne is the face of a man. God made provision for the humanity of men to be captured in the throne room. Part of the Christian experience allows for your humanity to find expression. Jesus wept. Listen to me, I'm speaking to you. Jesus wept. It is okay to cry. Some of you, you are sitting down right now. There are things that have challenged you. And you have been taught that if you cry, you don't have faith. Let me teach you something. Your tears call his mercy. You get to a point where you say, Lord, if you don't help me, my ministry cannot rise. If you don't help me, I will never marry. If you don't help me, I will never have financial resources. Lord, I've come to a point where we can't build this church. It has remained at foundational level for 10 years because I've bragged all around that I'm a man of faith. And now I submit to you. You call his mercy. David was a man who mastered the mercy of God. You see, this David man is somebody we must study. God gave him an option whether to leave him in the hands of his enemies or to deal with him. God said, David said, my enemies, men, no way. I, let it be me and you. I know how to beg you. I know what to touch. Every time the nation of Israel were beside by different nations to kill them, every time it was obvious that defeat was imminent, they would raise a song. You are good and your mercy is forever. Hallelujah. Do you know that was not a special number, it was a formula. Every time three kings will come together and they will know we are dead. They say, Leave swords, gather the priests, let Judah move forward. We need to call on God's mercy, otherwise, they are going to finish us. And the moment they raise that song, for he is good and his mercy is endure, God will say, Now step back, let me fight. There are many cheap battles that we have allowed the devil to defeat us in because we have gone in the strength of the flesh. Many people are ashamed of the word mercy because when you say mercy, you think someone, you are asking because you fornicated with someone or you did something. I, I shouldn't ask mercy. I'm too mature for mercy. Ah, in today's world, when mercy is your rare God, his presence remains with you. They carried it every time. The ark. When they were going around Jericho, there was no way Jericho would go down. And God said, guys, I don't want to hear your voice now. Let the ark speak. Seven days the ark was speaking while men were quiet. At the seventh day, he said, the ark has won. Shout. One shout brought Jericho down. It is of the Lord's mercy it is of the Lord's mercy. It is of the Lord's mercy that we are not consumed. Above the mercy seat, between the cherubims, that's where you will find me. If it is my face you are looking for, I have a location. When I search the earth, I see men who are Christians, but they, are, they don't assume that posture. They don't need my mercy. Their self-sufficiency receives my salvation, but drives my mercy. So you are born again, but you never can rise. This man standing before you is a product of the mercy of God. I know it. I'm not ashamed to say it. That's why you see him do the things that he does. When you look at me, you are looking at a man who God has shown mercy and grace. He said, thou shall arise and have mercy. I want to favor them, but 
favor cannot just come until mercy goes before it. So, oh God, arise and have mercy upon this family. Don't say we are tired. It's been witchcraft for 30 years. Who will break it? I know I'm a man of God. You will sit down there in pride and watch it happen as if you are not born again. But you invoke the mercy of God. And watch what happens. And God looks at you and says, no one has risen in your family. I choose you. I hold your hand by myself. Let's go. And you will watch battles. The angel held the hand of Peter and the gates started opening by themselves. By themselves. Have you been blessed tonight? That there is a place we find God. That's what happened to Jacob. The first time God appeared, although God was in the place, Jacob's posture didn't allow him to benefit. And God had to allow him. Laban dealt with him. Seven years for a wife, Laban changed her in the night. He got up in the morning to find out that this was not the woman he paid dowry for. Started another seven years. He told Laban, please, let me go and have my own family. Laban refused. In that frustration, he left. Now Esau was going to come and he didn't know what would happen to him. That frustration led him when he was alone. God said, my mercy has been trailing you. Now I can come. Some of you, because of this message tonight, let me tell you, you will receive very strange visitations. God will tell some of you for 12 years, I've been waiting for you to hear this sermon. I would have blessed you since, but every time you stand, your sufficiency is in yourself. You will never arrive that way. Now step back and let me step in. The day I met the Lord, I had fasted and prayed and done all these things. I wasn't fasting that day. I can't remember praying anything. I was just lying down, but with a desperation. A desperation. I will teach you on hunger tomorrow. Desperation. And all of a sudden, Jesus walked into my room. I can't remember inviting him. I honestly can't remember. He walked me. When people ask me today, what is the price to see Jesus? I'm, I'm, it's, it's a bit difficult to answer. I can't tell you there is no price. But I can also tell you there is a price. The price is the price to get his mercy to come your direction. That's the price. When the mercy of God, in fact, it is the price for everything in the kingdom. If the mercy of God can come towards your direction, brothers and sisters, you will see people. Do you know in the Bible, many people did the same thing and God rebuked some and left some? <laughs> Aaron and Miriam insulted Moses. The glory of God came, left Miriam leprous as snow. And then nothing happened to Aaron. How about God? Your grandfather worshipped idols. My grandfather worshipped idols. And all of a sudden, God is lifting me as if they serve Jesus all over in our life. And then he leaves you like this. The difference is mercy. You will never understand grace till you understand mercy. Most people who teach grace destroy people because they don't teach mercy my life today i repeat is a testimony of his mercy the day dr miles monroe died i was in worry i think worry delta state and that night before i would go to sleep my chest started paining me one of the great mentors i had in my life it pained me when the man went to be with the lord I was, to, I was planning already to meet with him a few months before he died. And um, when I heard 5 a.m. in the morning, I got a text that he had died in a plane crash. I said, my God, how could a man who was so pivotal to the revelation of the kingdom... Now, it doesn't matter the situations that surrounded his death. There are many debates as to this and that. My job is not to create the theological debate. But it reminded me again how many planes would have crashed with me inside. It's not just saying I have faith. Sometimes we need to humble ourselves for once. And say Lord I know that I have faith. But this one is your mercy. 
it's your mercy it's your mercy that moses is growing in the house of pharaoh and they did not see him it is the mercy of god the center of wizardry there was the very person satan was looking for he was in that house eating the wizard's food yet the eye of witchcraft could not see him think of all the things that god has done in your life that you know he said if the lord had not been by our side now may israel say if the lord had not been by my side i have seen anointed men and women of god who ministry doors have refused to open to. they love god i testify that they love god your goodness is real i testify your goodness is real your mercy is real i testify your mercy is real your favor is real i testify hallelujah thank you darling god bless you we're going to pray two prayer points tonight the first prayer point um what's that song Rock of ages, clap for me. I'm establishing the prayer point. Let me hide myself in thee. Rock of ages, clap for me. Let me hide myself in thee. You are my shield, you are my covering, you are my stability, my foundation, take me to the place, that's the prayer point, the place you are, the secret place. That's where I want to be. Take me to the place. The, the place, place you are. The That's where I want to be. That's where I want to be. That's where I want to be. Lord, bring me to a place tonight where i acknowledge your sufficiency not my strength not my qualification it is not of him that will it it is not of him that run it but of the lord that showed mercy and who are you praying thank you for your mercy bring me to a point oh god where I lose confidence in my flesh. Without you, I can't do nothing. Without you, there's no life to me. So I need in my life today, Lord, I need you in my life. I need you in my life. It is of the Lord's mercy. Talk to the Lord. 
bring me to a point, oh God, where my pride is buried in your mercy. Bring me to a point, oh God, where my self-sufficiency is buried in your mercy. It's not just because I pray. It's not just because I have kept myself. It's not just because I was called into ministry. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The second prayer point. If you can pray this prayer point with the sincerity of your heart. Lord, for the sake of your name, show me mercy. Pray this prayer and watch God arise in ways that will surprise you. For, the, for your name's sake, show my ministry mercy. Lord, I've been fasting for this anointing. I've desired this prophetic grace. I've desired this apostolic anointing. I've desired a change of story. For your name's sake, I cry out for mercy. Take over. Take over. I have come to the end of myself. Take over, take over. I have touched the end of myself. Please take over, Jehovah. I have come to the end of myself. Hallelujah, hallelujah. This is the end of me. Take over, take over. I have come to the end of myself. Take over, take over. I have touched the end of myself. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I have come to the end of my Hallelujah, hallelujah. I have come, I have come. Hey, take over. Lord, I fasted to stop masturbation. I fasted to stop pornography. I fasted to stop a life of sin. I pray. I've done all I know to do. I pray. I've given. I've tightened. For the sake of your name, show me mercy. Hallelujah. Listen. Hallelujah. Listen to me. It is David the psalmist who will write his sins as a song and give his music director and say sing it. And God said what kind of man is this? What kind of man is this? He will sing and dance before God. His wife looks at him and says, you are disgracing yourself. He said, I danced before the God who took the throne from your father and gave to me. God had her and she remained without a child till death. Listen, listen. We are rounding up. But something is happening to you that is preparing you for this conference. God is preparing you for encounter. You prayed, but you never cried for mercy. 
the mercy of God is a personal revelation that I've learned in my life. I learned this years ago when I was nothing and I had nothing. I can teach you principles, but when you summarize in the final analysis, we are products of God's strange mercy. There is a dimension to every man's success that he cannot explain. It's an equation that only the mercy of God can cover that gap. When all is said and done, the horse is prepared for battle. But it will take the mercy of God to grant safety. There are people praying. We are going to round up soon. But I want you to pray just one more prayer. Lord, I take everything that looks like my achievement, like a trophy, I lay it down to you. Lift your voice and pray. Lord, I can't deny the fact that you have anointed me, but I lay it tonight. Lord, I thank you because you made me a beautiful lady. Thank you because you made me a handsome guy. But Lord, I bring it tonight before your presence. I still see men and women who are ashamed to take off their golden crowns and worship His Majesty. Lord, you have everything. My achievements, my crowns, I bring before you. Take all of me, all of me, Lord. You have my everything. I give all of me, all of me, Lord. You have my everything. Take my everything I release my everything You have my everything Use my everything Take all of me All of me, Lord You have my everything Take all of me all of me hey. I give all of me I give all of me to you hey. he said I beseech thee brethren by the mercies of God that ye offer, offer, offer the incense, the incense of sacrifice that you will offer and allow yourself to be burned and the smoke that rises from you like the sacrifice of Abel will rise to the heavens and God will smell a sever that will compel him there. This is the thing I did with my life, brothers and sisters. If I live by his mercy, then why will I withhold anything from him? Listen, I want you to still pray that prayer. There are things that we cannot give God. There are things that we cannot release. That's why he doesn't come to us. Some of us is your finances. Some of us is your relationship. If God makes a demand, no, 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 no. Whatever you cannot give God is Him in your life. Everything. Can you pray and say, Lord, take everything. Take everything in my life that contends with you. 
not to take it away from you but to bring it to its rightful position whether it is money whether it is anointing whether it is ministry whether it is titles whatever it is I'm singing this song because the Lord said I should sing it. While I'm singing this song, something will happen to you. Just a few minutes. I'm standing here now the one prayer I'm praying for you there are people who will be initiated into a realm of deep encounters that's that's the only prayer tonight I want to pray for you now hallelujah now not everyone but whether you are inside or outside there are people just from this one prayer there is something your Christian experience is about to shift please I want you to bring them outside whether down up if, if there's no space you can just lord i'm praying now in the name of jesus by the message of the god of heaven there are men and women here you brought me to this city help that lady please whether you are an usher or not please help them whether you are an usher or not i stretch my hands now across this place may the angel of the lord's presence the angel of encounter the one that brings men and women into realms of encounter may he begin to draw men help them please don't let anyone enjoy himself around you bring them out inside outside may that angel my god my god my god I see ladies there are women the spirit of encounters I call you by the spirit New dimension in the spirit The eyes that see And the ears that hear No more nominal Christianity By the spirit Come into a realm the Spirit of God is saying, come up, Kida. Come up, 
Kida. Come up, Kida. For the sake of that call that is upon your life, for the sake of the revival that must happen in this city, for the sake of the election, the prophecy upon your family, come up here tonight. Hallelujah. Listen, there are some of you, you came for this conference, but the grace, the anointing, you never knew that the call of God was upon your life. God has been following you for years, quietly. Some of you through university, God has been following you. Tonight is the night when that depth of destiny is calling. 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 I'm rounding up. Oh, speak from the heavens and the earth will hear. Oh, sing from the heavens and I'll hear from the earth. Oh, sing from your heavens and I'll hear from the earth. My altar is calling you. Oh, God, my sacrifice is calling you. Oh, God, my altar is calling you. Oh, God, take my prayer. Take my prayer. in this place for my altar is calling you oh God my altar is calling you oh God my altar is calling you take my praise take my praise now for all of you who are in front in the name of jesus i stretch my hands at the count of three the grace that keeps you in this encounter receive it now one two three take that grace take that grace i supply help them help them help them please so they don't enjoy themselves that grace on your life that grace Hallelujah. Now listen. Tomorrow morning, tomorrow morning, I, I understand there are two more sessions. Am I right? There's a session in the morning. And now please listen. Tomorrow in the morning is going to be a prophetic service. There are things that must end in people's lives. I don't know the sacrifice you need to make tomorrow. But please, this is not just an invitation. This is not just a conference. God is visiting people. There are people whose destinies must change. Are you hearing what I'm saying? There are people whose destinies must change. There's no time to do much. But please, don't just come tomorrow with your heart open. Come with hunger. Because... You will be in the service while God is doing something in your home. Changing things. In this conference, God has come to shift things. Don't sit down doubting. No. As soon as Saul saw Samuel, the missing donkey went back home. He didn't ask the donkey to go. As soon as his eye met the prophet, the donkey started going back home. And then, tomorrow night, 
we trust that the power of God will blow up the roof in this church and to just visit this land it's going to be a miracle and an impartation service I don't do impartations carelessly but one of the things that will happen tonight I cried this to God is that an unction, an anointing, a mantle that he must locate someone in this place and rest there is no way we should we will go back and end this conference and you just so you felt good there are people who must carry definite mantles hallelujah we are going to be activating the gifts of the spirit and God is going to be releasing you into strange dimensions please if you are a pastor or you know a pastor I like you even if not for the morning service please for the evening service it's not that i'm better than anyone it's a product of god's grace but so that we can be partakers of this grace and carry something that will shift the church in Nsuka. do you know when i came when bishop met me at the airport he said something that touched me our father here he said man of god you are welcome to this city and this state and he said the gates of the city is open for you i i was very blessed because it was a very instructive and a prophetic statement if the gate is open then that means there should be unrestrained access into the situations in your life and to correct them by the spirit father we give you praise tonight i prophesy to everyone here between tonight hear me and tomorrow's service in the name of jesus as a token for what God is doing in this conference return with a strange dimension of testimonies please believe it in the name of Jesus some of you hear me on your way going back home you will get text messages and your family members will call you and say some things that have been missing some things that have caused trouble in the family I say this by the election of God's grace in the name of Jesus everything that must show up in your life between this night and tomorrow morning I command it to show up now <laughs> wave your hands to Jesus and give him pray in the spirit I know that we're excited but let's go ahead and pray there's a lot to do tonight go ahead and pray in the spirit let your heart be open everywhere whether you are inside outside you're following online Pray in the spirit. And the barato said, I get the balacatabus. Sete pacarota, sete prete, get the barata, get the balada bacata, prete, get the beladebus. Janda capra said, I get the balade bacata barada baladabas. Please pray, don't be distracted. Secrotusu to barada baladabas. Shada balacata prete, get the baladabas. Aka prende di sia da balla così a da barus. Mante bratu cada bradisce de bredini da bas. Pray in the spirit of the tire. Alla bade brahesse de balla gato. Sada bala 
Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Please spare yourselves into two if you can. And for the next few minutes, I just want you to hold your hands of that neighbor and begin to pray in the spirit. Go ahead and pray. Let your attention be on Jesus and your destiny. No distraction. Pray house of I insist that I must have an encounter tonight. Lift your voice and pray. Lift your voice and pray. I insist. I insist. I must have an encounter tonight. Halabato sabarakato shada. And asana malakato pratekete bahasadadash. Lord, that anointing for my ministry, that unction for my destiny. Something must fall upon me tonight. 
that will cause my generation to hear your voice through my lips. We release the sound of the heavens, the sound of creation, Shekinah is here. I release the sound of the heavens, the sound of creation, Shekinah is here. I'm prophesying to the atmosphere. I release the sound of the heavens, the sound of creation, Shekinah is here. I cry holy. Yeshua, I sing holy, 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 unto Yeshua, Shekinah I sing. I release the sound of the heavens, the sound of creation. Yahweh, Yahweh, hey, hey, hey. Yahweh, Yahweh, hey, hey. very simple song. Hey, hey. Yahweh, say. Presentation of a dimension of the Holy Spirit. I stretch my hands right now. 34. That anointing is finding you now. 34 people inside this place and outside. Right now, please help them. I stretch my hands right now. The Spirit of the Living God. You don't have to bring them out. Just, just. Even if you have to bring them out, don't bring them out. The minister stand here. You can just keep them somewhere there. I stretch my hands right now. That anointing is coming on someone right now. Coming on someone's life. Coming.
coming on someone's life, you will never be the same. You will never be the same. You will never be the same. Hallelujah. I'm seeing something that I saw yesterday at our miracle service. I'm seeing coals of fire. We're going to sit down shortly. But I'm seeing coals of fire. And I'm seeing it being dropped on the hands of people. And as I'm saying it right now, physically, you are going to feel that fire on your hand. Right now, it's happening to people, not everybody. But I'm stretching my hands. That fire. The spirit of revival is in this place. Shalande gato saliha prahasi gata baruti. Sheleke proske de baronda ziadama. Shalato sabra gadeshi anaha paras. Yahweh, Yahweh. Hallelujah. The spirit of prophecy. We're going to sit down shortly. Just let me do what I'm doing. The spirit of prophecy. In fact, I'm even seeing people outside, not even those in the auditorium. I'm seeing the spirit of prophecy. And literally, right now, people within here and outside, people are going to begin to laugh in the spirit and they will begin to prophesy. Right now, I release that grace. Please stop. I release that grace. Just the symbol. Let me hear it. Right now, I stretch my hands. In the name of Jesus, I stretch my hands. Please help them. Just bring them to the front and keep them. Whether you are an usher or not, please help them so they don't destroy anything. Right now, I stretch my hands. The spirit of prophecy. Bring them out somewhere here. In the name of Jesus. You call it a total experience. That grace, that grace, that grace. In the name of Jesus. I release the sound of the heavens, the sound of creation, Shekinah is here. I release the sound of the heavens, the sound of creation, Shekinah is here. Feel me, Yaka. Feel me, Yaka. Feel me, Yaka. Feel me, Yaka. Please give me volume, Mike. Feel me, Yaka. of the living God we are here for a total experience you have put it upon the heart of your servant the angel of this house to shift your people into seasons in the spirit and to shift this church to shift this city Lord the anointing for this meeting the grace for this meeting in the name that is above all names as I teach your word tonight let there be a supernatural activity of angels call men O oh God into deep dimensions in the spirit let there be an initiation into dimensions and levels of spiritual understanding of power of grace In the name of Jesus. Let's just be silent for a minute if you can. Except just for those under the anointing. Mm. The 
spirit of the living God is shifting us. Shifting us. Shifting us. I'm seeing a shift in the spirit. It's like a wind that is blowing. A shift. It's an experience you will never forget. Whether you are online, at the Sunday school, outside. Let that shift happen. We are spiritual people. We allow that shift to happen. That shift is happening right now in the spirit. I shall pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Your sons. Thank you, Sam. Your daughters will prophesy. Just a few minutes and we'll be seated. This is why we're here. The Lord is opening spiritual eyes. Hmm. The Lord is opening spiritual eyes. I'm seeing a notebook and a biro. It's a manifestation of the spirit of revelation. Never will you see things just from a physical standpoint. You will begin to see the spirit behind operations. Tonight, the Holy Spirit is revealing Himself in this place as fire. Is a mystery that we must understand. Fire. While my physical eyes are closed, my eyes are open in the spirit. Fire. Is a mystery that refines. Is a mystery that prunes. Is a mystery that separates. Is a mystery that purifies. Is a mystery that burns. And is a mystery that makes. Like a mighty wind, spirit of victory, cover us with your wings. Blow, blow, blow like a mighty wind, spirit of victory, cover us with your wings. Please blow. Blow, blow like a mighty wind, spirit of victory, cover us with your wings. Blow, blow, blow like a mighty wind, spirit of victory. One more time. Blow, blow, say blow, blow, blow like a mighty spirit of victory. Cover us with your wings. Sing low, blow, blow like a spirit of victory. Bless our hearts, O God, in the name of Jesus. Let your word prevail. Let there be a breaking tonight. Let there be a pruning tonight. Let there be a refining tonight. Let there be a lifting tonight. Let there be healings tonight. Let there be deliverance tonight. Let there be prophecies tonight. Let there be impartations tonight. Let there be turnarounds tonight. Let there be decisions tonight. Let there be restorations tonight. In the name of Jesus. Please be seated and be sensitive while you do so. Pastor Shola, thank you so much. It's my pleasure. May the Lord bless you, household of David. I love you with all my heart. My spirit is fired up. 
It's my joy to be here. I appreciate all of us who are here. Um, I want to commend your pastor for the sacrifice of engaging the church to pray and seek the face of God. Um, let me tell you something, brothers and sisters. You see, one of the secrets one of the secrets of impact of, it doesn't matter if, like Pastor said, um, don't worry, even if those outside they just need to hear me and connect. You just tell them they don't necessarily have to come in. If they can, I know they would want to come in, but trust me, trust me. There is the only difference between those inside and outside, spiritually speaking, is convenience. Hallelujah. We get to points in our lives where we need to take out time with God. Please come, sir. No matter how great you are, no matter how anointed you are, no matter how blessed you are, for as long as you are walking upon this earth, please listen, let me have your attention. Times come, not once, not twice in your life, where you will need to dedicate moments, not a day. Are we together? To seek the face of God. Not just because it's a routine, but because the urgency that surrounds the season of your life. One of the keys to shifting people to the next level is that God begins to put a burden in them for the secret place. He won't tell you yet that this is what is happening to you. All of a sudden you will sense an unusual hunger. When a season has come in your life, usually you find out that the urge to stay alone, that calling into the secret place are we together now it's already a sign it's an indication by the spirit that you are wrapping up an old season and you are about to enter a new one listen but this is also the area where satan has mastery if you miss that junction it can cost you sometimes another 10 years to turn around and get back to that level Satan doesn't just attack people every day. No. He waits for these kairos seasons. He knows. Remember he was once the light bearer. And he knows that men move in phases and seasons. So if he failed to stop you when you were born, then he will be waiting for you when you need to go to the cross. He, he doesn't just attack every day. He left Jesus and said, I know another moment when I will meet him. That's why God will usually say fast. It's not just a religious activity. No. It's because you are building capacity for the seasons. There are many things in our lives, brothers and sisters, that demand extended periods of waiting upon the Lord. You see, not every decision in your life has equal implication. You don't need to fast to know what clothes to wear. You just need common sense and a sense of convenience. Are we together? But there are major decisions. Lord, who do I settle down for the rest of my life with? Lord, do I relocate in Lagos or go abroad? There are many people, the devil destroyed them by giving them visas. Are we together? They found their way out of the will of God. Just because a visa was stamped on their passport, they believed it was the will of God. It takes sensitivity to know what is favor and what is deception because they all look the same. Is God speaking to us tonight? Lord, do I get into ministry? Do I quit that job? Look, there are sensitive decisions in our lives that the, the entire relevance of our lives and destinies are tied to them. You don't make those decisions sleeping. When Jesus needed to select 12 men 
who would walk with him for three years and later become the apostles of the Lamb, that the foundations of the new heaven will be built after their names. That even the foundations of the new Jerusalem carries the name of the twelve apostles. The Bible says he stayed up nights praying. Because with your eyes you will see Eliab and think he's the anointed of God. Do you know that walking in the flesh is the major reason why people never become relevant to a generation? The flesh is deceptive. The flesh will tell you this is God. And everything in your life will prove that it is God. Until you wait, you will see the deception of the flesh. There is something about waiting. Not just praying. Waiting. Many pray, but we don't wait. To wait doesn't just mean to pray. To wait means to wait. Are we together now? Yes. Pastor, it's amazing the destiny decisions that people take laughing. They take it drinking minerals. I, I like this lady. Can I go and see your parents? And this gentleman wants to live for 40 years. It's not a degree that even if you don't like, you just close your eyes and do it and throw away the certificate. When Satan knows that Isaac is coming, he will push Hagar very fast. Because he knows. If God wants to give you 20 million next week, the devil will give you 2 million now. Five, five naira. So that it looks plenty. Too distracting for you to go and say no. Our generation has lost the art of waiting until God. That's why we don't have convictions. Because you see, when you, when you get information from convictions, you will die there. I had God. I know what I saw. But this person you married, how come you don't have a child? I know what I had. I was not taking minerals. It was not in a beauty contest that I found her. I would die here. Marry another wife for where? The God that showed me that vision. Let that God bring the child. Conviction. Today, you see someone start a ministry. And after two years of five members, he just says, Look, it looks like that one. I will just go and add MSc to my degree so that I can just get a job. As though it was lack of a job that took him to the vineyard. No conviction. Because we hardly respect the secret place. Many things happened here. My brothers and my sisters, hear me. You will never change a generation if you do not understand the power of waiting. There are Kairos seasons in our lives. Times. Every time in a student's life, he is required to be serious. But when Wayek is coming close... He is not just serious. It's an opportune time. It's with that result he can go to the university. So it's true that he should read every day. But during Waek, you see students with all kinds of skills. Coffee. Um, cold water. And nobody tells them, ah, it's too much. Mm -mm. They say, you better take that coffee and sit down and study. Because it's an opportune time. Listen. Not everything can be recovered at the same time. Listen, listen. Some recoveries, even if they come, the challenges they have created is something you may have to live with forever. Are we together now? And it becomes more dangerous when you are a shepherd. Because you see, it's easy to be a follower. You just need to be sure and trust that the leader is hearing God. If he throws you somewhere, you call God and say, Lord, I, I follow this man diligently. Look at where he took me now. But when you are a leader, you have to be sure you are hearing God. Because you see, there is a way that seemeth right unto a man, but it is the end. So you can be thinking you are right for 10 years. Then the 11th year, you find out you are wrong. But within those 10 years, you have mentored people along your error. And then by the 11th year, you don't know how to turn now and start saying, sorry, yo, hi. So the boastful statement I made in year 8 and 9 was still a lie. Are we together now? The Bible says, even the young men, listen carefully, even the young men 
will be weary. The youth will utterly fall. Very critical decisions. And we go on the internet. What to do? Ministry or business? Enter. And we smile. And then we sit down and wonder why God cannot trust us with the grace for a generation. Listen, it's one thing to have the anointing upon you as a believer. It's another thing to have the anointing upon you according to the office that God has called you in. But it's another thing to have the anointing for God's emphasis in a generation. Listen, these are three levels of the anointing. You can have the anointing as a believer. You can have the anointing with your office. But for every move of God, God finds men who have aligned enough and there is a grace. That's why I can be anointed, but a season will come. You know I'm not in God's program in that season. I'm anointed, but for whatever reason, you know that in this season, this man did not align himself to be featured in God's program. Is God speaking to us? So when you see God corporately calling a church to pray and fast, my brothers and my sisters, it's not a time to mourn. Forget about what happens to your outward man. You see, we, we are a very carnal generation. And, and it's not an insult, it's a description. It's the reason why inconvenience tortures us too much. Just because you are losing weight, just because of a little inconvenience, just because there is no AC, just because while you are worshipping your trouser tears, you know, all this, we, we are so embarrassed, we carry our entire ego and put it upon it. When a student is going to write exam, if you are rushing to go and write your final paper and your wig removes and the door is about to be shut, please talk to me intelligent people. Do you, do you just turn and say, ah, the gentlemen are going to laugh at me. There is a desperation requirement that you must have for the gates of destiny to be opened. There is a, a requisite level of desperation over God. Desperation that is greater than the comfort of your body. Desperation that is greater than the comfort of your belly. Desperation that is greater than your reputation. Desperation that is greater than name. Are we together? So when you set yourself to seek his face... The devil will bring all kinds of nuisances around your life. Oh, a new movie just came out. A new this and that. And God says, no. Remember you are in a season. That person is not in their season. So they can afford to be careless and play around. But you are in a season. While we're, you know, in the plane coming, I was so tired. I, I barely slept this morning. And then we had to head for the airport. And then I just laid down and the Holy Ghost spoke to me. He said, son, you are entering your season of glory. It's not for my word. You can receive it, but I'm telling you what God told me. You see, the moment God said that, what do you think a wise Christian should do? Just jump, hallelujah. No, that you wore a good warfare. Because when that announcement comes, the devil hears it too. You are not the only one who had it. And Satan will say, alright, you are entering your season of glory. What can we use to abort the season can be aborted? Yes, sir. The Lord was in this place and I knew not. That means my time of visitation should have come. But something happened. There was a lot of carelessness in my spirit. That's why you find certain people they can do well in a particular season, even in ministry. Then they get to a level, they never move again. They miss the season. I tell you, that's what happened. Because you see, sometimes the comfort of success can blind you from knowing when seasons come. You can, I mean, it, it's, it's easy to fast when, when you don't have enough to eat. You, you have a justification that is already tilted towards fasting. So you can as well just fast. But what happens when you are comfortable? 
it's harder to seek God when you have results than when you don't. So I assume that all the people inside here and outside are people who are truly passionately seeking God. There are meetings where you must love God to come. If you really came for that meeting, then you love God. Are we together? It takes hunger. It takes hunger. My brothers and my sisters, this glory, this power, this grace that we see, God is not a magician. It doesn't just fall on people. Don't mind people who just make it look like you just go and fetch it anywhere. No, sir. Not everything in the kingdom is a gift. I've told you this. There are things that are rewards. There is no shortcut to it. No matter how healthy a woman is, is nine months straight. You don't give birth to a child. No matter how healthy the child is, you don't give birth to a child who just jumps down and says, I'm so healthy. No, whether you give birth to the child in a hospital in Buckingham Palace is going to be from crying to sucking and then grow. Some things in life cannot be hurried. You have to just pass through it. What You don't pray that the season be accelerated. You pray for grace to pass through it. Until you finish that spiritual curriculum, the class you miss will tell in life. You can miss lectures in the physical and read up and write an exam, but not destiny. I can look at you and know that you miss character 101, character 501. This one, you press for the anointing, but you miss this area. Are we together? So we are not here tonight just to celebrate miracles, although that will happen. But I'm telling you tonight is a night where God wants to give us an encounter with dimensions. You see, when God wants to bless you, He doesn't give you money. Hear me. When God wants to bless you, He doesn't give you a house. No! When God wants to bless you, He doesn't give you a shop. He doesn't give you a job. He gives you what money cannot buy. I always use examples. Look at this. I think I've used that example here. My dear, please come. Come stand here. This is my phone. Hold it, please. This is a product. Is that true? Just lift it up so they see it. Assuming this is 1,000 Naira. If this lady wants to buy this phone, what do I give her? So this is the capital that buys this. Is that true? Now, what if this is what she wants? What is the capital that buys this one? If it's true that this is what buys this, then what is it that buys this? The name of the capital that buys this is called true riches. That's what God gives men. He doesn't give men money. This, this is man-made. Unfortunately, this is what people labor for. Listen carefully. Is the reason why people are about to die of heart attack now. Is the reason why people leave God. God is saying, come let me give you something that will make both the rich and poor need you. And they say, oh God, no, no, just connect me to one uncle somewhere. And God is saying, what are you saying? When you go to your uncle, you will have to sit at his terms. But when he calls because something you have, you see if I told you that as you are sitting down now you are becoming wealthy you won't believe it because what you are thinking about is if I say let's share one one thousand you say ah what kind of a church is this I'm coming back next week but you don't know that God blesses men by giving them true riches halakbara you are the mighty God. Ain't the you. You are the glory of God. to the world because they think it's a distraction. We have been indoctrinated that church is just an avenue for men of God to raise money. 
And so every time we come, we just look at it and, ah, okay, this one that is coming, now how much am I giving? No, sir. No, sir. God draws people. He calls this assembly to lift your life, to give you something that money cannot buy. If all you have can be bought with money, you don't have much. Let me say it again. If all you have can be bought with money, then you don't have much. But there is something he can put in your destiny. The things that matter are things that money cannot buy. So it will make both the rich and the poor to listen to you. Don't you know that what you are looking for is only poor people that will come to you. Why do people don't need some of these things? But there is something that can come from heaven. It can be bought in any market. You don't see a fake version of it. That God can put something in your life and you can run back home and say, Mama, I found a key. She said, you mean you got a job? He said, no. If it was a job, I wouldn't dance this much. I found something. What is that something? I found a key. A key that will make a generation hear you. I found a key. A key that will make both the rich and poor to sit and listen. I found a key. A key that vetoes your background. Vetoes whatever territory. What is that key? I found it. That key is a man. It's not a thing. It's not an object you turn left and right. I found the key. Have you found it? There are people who have found this thing. I found your word. I did eat it. It was a joy and a rejoicing. When I found this thing, I rejoiced. I knew my life, it was over. Some of us who didn't have the privilege of coming from good backgrounds. What is your bailout system in this wicked world? Where someone can look at you and say, I know your father. You are as poor and stupid as your father. But when he puts it upon you, Jesus. Please sit down and listen to what I'm teaching you. Your pastor put this meeting because he loves you. The thing we are chasing for will never give us the result we want. Find out the various reasons why you are distracted from spiritual things. Number one, Naira and Kobo. You don't know that this money itself is a living thing. There is a reason why it runs away from you. Money is not an object. I was teaching yesterday pastor the bible says in ecclesiastes i think i'm seven or so it says money is a defense wisdom too is a defense that means money is a weapon is that true i'm not talking about money i'm just using it and the bible says our weapons are not carnal so it is a weapon god knows you need the money as a weapon but he says it is not carnal not man-made this was made by cbn that means this is not what God is talking about. Because he says this is man-made. Pastor, the various reasons why people leave God. It's amazing. The average believer has indoctrinated himself into believing that God is an option for losers. When you try useful things in your life and they don't work, just console yourself because you are surely on your way to heaven. Poverty will send you to... You know, they have this idea. So they say, just seek God. Oh. And you see people drag themselves like they are going to a graveyard. All in the name of God. Whoever taught you that men seek God and lose? Whoever taught you that just because you are seeking God and you don't have a rent, and just because you are seeking God and one or two things are not in place, don't let a carnal generation make God look like a cheap commodity. God is priceless. Find out those who sought Him and how they changed their generation. You are looking for a job. God wants to make you a voice. You are looking for a little opportunity to build a small duplex. Whereas God wants to make your name a key to men's destinies. That someone can come and say, well, I graduated with third class. But um, I, I, I just had to greet my uncle before coming here. Say, who is your uncle? Say, Pastor Sholai. Say, Pastor Sholai is your uncle. Come, you will be my secretary. Sorry, sir. I said I studied. It's not about what you studied. If Pastor Sholai listens to you, then I know that you can come here. A man can become a key. 
God told me this years ago. Listen. He said, son, if you will make men see me, there is nothing I will not give you. I think you've heard my story. I'm sorry I'm starting this way. You can see that. Just let me do what I'm doing here. I came to bless you. Pastor, years ago, I went to Ibadan. There's a, there's a hotel called, uh, what's the name now? Uphill. Premier Hotel. I remember going there years ago. It was night. And I went there. I knew that, I mean, nobody, I mean, it, 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 how they did even throw me out of that place is, is even a miracle. I went there. There was no place to sleep. There was no money. There was nothing. I saw wealthy people come in. They just parked. They went and I looked. I said, oh dear. I saw small children of rich people just jump around and touch anything. They are not afraid whether it breaks or not. And I was just watching. How unfair life can be. It was night there. I had to come down and look for a church that was having a vigil. Not because I wanted to attend a vigil. Are we together? And I stood in front of that hotel. I said, one day, God will bring me here with honor. I may not have what it takes in terms of business prowess or whatever achievement, but I have someone who, a real Godfather. A few years later, I would be ushered to that same place. And at the highest, um, what they call it, the suit there, I went with this, my gentleman. And I mean, they were swimming, they were jumping, playing table tennis. And I was looking at them from my window. I said, God, you told me this. You told me. You told me that if I walk with you, no man will laugh at me for long. You told me. There is something God can give you that money cannot buy. So when he calls you and says, my daughter, seek me. My son, seek me. Forget about the hunger that happens for 30 days. Because whether you are fasting or not, many of us, the hunger is still there. So it's better for it to be there for 30 days and then live for the rest of your life. Are we together? Many of us have come from backgrounds where, honestly speaking, except something supernatural happens, there is no possibility of rising to any dimension. And God calls you. He calls you and men interpret his calling as an inconvenience. Lord, why are you distracting me? Are you not satisfied with the five minutes I gave you? If you want, I can bribe you with another five minutes before I sleep. Mumble some tongues and open my Bible and read one verse. It should be enough for you. And God says, I want to help you. I thought I saw you crying and I came to you now. And he said, Lord, I need money. This is what I need. If it's not money you are knocking my door with, go back. I need raw money straight. And God is saying, if I bless you with money alone, I still cheated you. But someone can kneel down and say, Lord, I may not have much now. I'm not ashamed. I'm not embarrassed. I may not come from a great family like Gideon. But Lord, I heard that when you find men, you make wonders out of them. I'm available. I may not be much. I may not have all the parameters that men use to measure success. And God says, just trust me. Ah! Oh God, you are my God. And I will ever praise you. Oh God, you are my God. And I will ever love you. Oh God, you are my God. And I will ever trust you. I will seek you in the morning. And I have learned to walk in your way. For step by step you lead me And I will follow you all of my days One more time, step by step For step by step you lead me And I will follow you all of my days Oh God, oh God, you are Thank you. 
my teaching tonight by reorienting your passion for God. God has monetary value. God has destiny value. God is not just an option that adds to the thing in your life. So I'm a spiritual businessman. So I'm successful. I'm an intelligent graduate who is working in an oil company. But just because I want to go to heaven, I decided to pay attention to God. If you place an advert of a business seminar, people rush there. Why? Because you see the value there. Is that true? Yeah. When you place a job advert, people rush. But when you place an advert, come and seek him and know him. People say this distraction called God. God, there is a track record. They will say it directly, but their lives will show. When people are seeking God, they ask them, are you working? They say, no, I'm just managing. I'm, I'm waiting for a job. But I see you spending time in His presence. They say, oh, what will I do? There's no job, so let me just be doing this before then. Oh, dear. I have learned that this my God, when God holds your hand, and decides to lift you, Pastor Shola, it will amaze you. You will stand in awe and join those clapping for you to wonder and say, God, who are you? Could it be that I don't know you? Is this how you lift men? Is this how you can turn a man's life around? Do we not know that Saul, when did Saul become a prophet? And God says, when you add me to the equation of a man's life, I've said it, one plus one plus God is equal to any answer he wants. One plus one is two, but one plus one plus God can be one million. Listen to me. Let me challenge you here. If in case you just came for this meeting just because you felt your friend just pressured you to come and you're saying, okay, let's while away time, it's a Saturday. I want you to change your mind. See it as someone calling you to say, I want to change your life. Pastor, you know, we say this all the time. One encounter in God's presence will change people's life. They just say amen, but truly they don't believe. When you hold my hands, everything becomes possible. When you hold my hands, Impossible becomes possible, say, when you hold my hand, everything, everything becomes possible. you are looking for come to you the bible says the gentiles will come to your life forget about those laughing at you my brother stay with him with your torn trouser and your 200 naira shoe there's no need of faking it why fake what can be real stay with him and watch the wonder he will make out of your life that a day will come you will sit down and say God what have you turned my life to what have you turned my life to I can tell you that this God we serve is not a scam don't get used to people cheating and defrauding you and add God to the list this man standing before you is a testimony that when God holds your hand, a generation must hear you. It has nothing to do with sentiments. Are we together now? Yes. Sacrifice. 
Let me tell you a, a, a very humorous uh, something that, that happened. Um, I went somewhere to preach and um, you notice there's a lot of scarring in my face. I went somewhere to preach and, you know, was a big sacrifice there. And uh, I mean, after the whole thing, I don't know whether it was the water or something. And I mean, this thing just messed up my face and all of that. And I turned, I said, Lord, all this sacrifice I'm doing, this is for the gospel. My face is paying the price and everything is paying the price. And then I was praying just today. And the Lord just spoke to me. And said, do you not know that the sufferings of this present time is not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed? When I came in here, Pastor, I quickly sent, I said they should find me, a, maybe a dermatologist or someone to just come and look at my face. And they got a woman somewhere. And when she came, that woman had been praying to God to come to Zaria for koinonia. So, listen. So, when she heard that they said, we want you to come and look at Apostle, she, she couldn't believe it. When she came, she said, I told her, I said, how much, said, how much what? <laughs> when you hold my hand, everything becomes possible. When you hold my hand, Prophesy to yourself one more time. When you hold, you hold my hand, everything becomes possible. When you hold my hand, everything becomes possible. When your uncle holds your hand, some things are not possible. Many uncles have held their hands even when we're going down. It's not that they wanted to throw you down. It's that they were men too. Are we together now? Your certificate held your hands. In fact, you held it and you were still going down with it. But when he holds your hand and says, Seek me. Seek me. He said, Oh God, I'm, I'm tired. I need to marry. There's a guy I saw. Oh God. And he said, Look, you are, if, if it's just by browsing Facebook and WhatsApp, you will not, you will marry a foolish man. Stay with me. Let me walk on you and you will see what I can do with Esther when she avails herself. The call to seek God is a call to change your life. The call to seek God is not a favor to honor a man's vision. The call to seek God and wait upon God is not an inconvenience just to come and repent when you have sinned. No! God is saying, I have heard your cry. Prepare a solemn assembly. I want to visit you. I want to change your life. Some of you right now, there are businesses you would have been doing. Maybe you left your shop and left whatever. And you are here. And the devil is telling you, imagine, 15,000 now. 30,000. And God is saying, what are you saying? 15,000, 30,000 and the wicked Luciferian spirit that disturbs members when the word of God is coming they sit down and calculate and somebody just calls and says are you going to give me or not I mean I can transfer 100,000 right now and God says sit down and you round up and go back feeling cheated God you cheated me I would have made 100,000 this night and God says is this what I'm worth to you 100,000 Whereas a day will come, somebody will be holding a check of a million naira, and he says, can I have the privilege of giving you? And you say, God is a lie. I'm joking. God says it's not a lie. That's what happens when men seek me. When Jesus was born, a star rose. It was so bright, men could not deny it. And the Magi carried their gift and started following the star. It's always a star that leads you to a person. Brothers and sisters, listen. Listen to me. I don't know what background spiritually that we've had. 
But I call you tonight, even as we prepare to pray, return back to seeking God as, as a means of living, as a livelihood, because it truly is. Don't see God as some part-time distraction. Angry while you are opening your Bible in the morning. Oh, Psalm 60 now. Kai, this Psalm is long. I thought it was 12 verses. Ah, is it that the devotional made a mistake? What is all this one? I need to hurry up. You see, that, that is a very wicked spirit because he wants to destroy you. But you can go and sit down in a man's office. After six hours. He said, you are still here. Be patient. He said, you are just happy that he passed and was aware you are there. He said, I hope you are not tired. me, Abba, Uncle, we are tired for where? I'm a young man. It's a job I'm looking for. While you are laughing, I hope you are getting what I'm saying. I came here sincerely to challenge and shake you up and down. There are many men of God, Pastor, carrying cards all around. I'm a man of God. I promise you, if you invite me, even you, you will know that God is at work in my life. My brother, with all due respect, the fact that you are running around seeking people, seeking opportunities. The Bible says, neither do men light a lamp. That's the secret. It's not the lamp, it's the light on it. The spirit of man is the candle of the Lord, but it does no good if it's just like that. But there is a fire that must come. When that fire comes, even if you put it under a bushel, it will burn it and make sure everybody knows there's fire there. There are many music artists carrying their albums, running around, begging and saying, Pastor, I hear there's a program. I'm anointed. The other day, I thought you had my song. Didn't you like what you had? See, that, those is a wrong approach. It's an analog and wicked approach that leads to bitterness and envy. The greatest way to publicize yourself is to remain in the secret place. That when you are in the secret place, you are making more noise than you know. You come out of that secret place. And as a man of God, you go for just one meeting. And God will make it such that all your destiny helpers are seated in front of you. And while they are hearing you, this one is saying, we've gotten the last speaker for our conference. This one is saying, we've gotten the next one. And you turn back and say, God, this is how you change people. Whereas there's somebody begging around. They say, okay, 10 minutes. or so you're holding up. And you come up the pressure because you are not anointed. You will talk nonsense and the people will not be blessed. The other pastor said, I told you, let it be the last time this man ever comes to our program. It pays to seek God, not just serve Him. It pays to seek God. We seek His hands, we seek His miracles. We seek anointing, which is not bad. But my brothers and my sisters, none of this is the face of God. You must be passionate. Passionate. Seeking God will cost you a lot. Let me be very honest in the name of honesty. Let me open you up to the truth. Seeking God will cost you a lot. The Christianity of convenience while you are seeking God is a joke. The convenience comes as a reward when you have found that which He gives you in the secret place. And sometimes we have to be honest. You see, as men of God, sometimes we make the mistake of pitying people who are starting out with God. And we make them to compare their lives with our current results and rush them out of their seasons of training. Are we together now? The brother is fasting and trusting God for his finances and studying. And sometimes you just look and say, this guy, this night be due for 30,000. I'm a mistake. No. Let him encounter Jehovah Jireh. Something is happening. Are we together now? Your pastor today can give out a million naira. And by evening it has returned. Because there is a track record. Something has been built in the spirit to produce that result. So no matter how they love you, you have to start. You have to create your own track record. Not everything in this kingdom is impartable. There are track records that you must create by yourself. Hear me, brothers and sisters. Seeking God will cost you your time. It will cost you your time. 
Anything you love, you have time for. Your job, your children, your wife, your husband, your business, you have time for it. Whether rain is falling or not, you know this is Monday, I should be at my shop. You defy that rain. Seek God. He said, I rather, I, I rather be a doorkeeper in the house of God. Passion. Seeking God will cost you your time. Lagos, I know we are busy people. I acknowledge this is a cosmopolitan city. This is a, a very value-driven city. But I call you once again to a place where men give God time. If you give God time, He will give you something that is worth your time. Are we together? God is speaking to someone right now. I need more of your time. That's what God is telling someone. I need more of your time. These five minutes every day, these ten minutes every day, this sitting down praying while you snore, 80% of the prayer time is sleep. God is saying, I need your time, and with that time, I need your seriousness. Seeking God will cost you a lot of things. Sadly, it may cost you a lot of pain. This is why when you talk against someone that God has anointed, even in the secret, you will be punished in the open. Not because God is unfair. The sacrifice that it takes to attain that level in the spirit is a sacrifice God guards with his own jealousy. He said he suffered no man to do them wrong. Yea, he reproved kings for their sake. Saying, touch not, not a believer, mine anointed, not the anointed, my like my property. Don't touch my wife. Are we together now? Are you ready to go through the pain that it will take to seek God? Don't just look at the glory. It takes pain. Because sometimes in seeking God, you will be strange. You will be against status quo. Men will misunderstand you. And say, why is this lady always running around church? So this is how far this husband sin has become. Hapa, take it easy. And you will feel stupid for seeking God. You will feel stupid for coming for prayer in the morning. And you will almost be tempted to say, Pastor, I think God has calmed me. Let me just go back. And God says, just when your miracle is coming. I've made up my mind that if I perish, brothers and sisters, I perish. But me and God, we have, it is a salt covenant. Inseparable. It's not because of what he's doing today. I love him desperately and truly. There's no amount of pain that I will not go. Pain means nothing to me when it comes to the love. My love for God. We're a very pain averse generation. And pain is something that you don't intentionally go and embrace. However, every successful person knows there is a pain factor. I, I wish that I were lying. I would have just apologized to you and said, okay, I'm joking. But I'm very serious. The birth of anything valuable is painful. That includes your destiny. Ask every mother here, they will tell you. No matter what kind of prayer warrior you are, no matter how supernatural the birth is, the memory of some level of travail. So whoever told you, that your destiny will just come as a platter of gold. My brother, my sister, it will take a price. It's costly. The bigger the destiny, the bigger you will need to push. It is as soon as Zion travails that she will push forth. There may be a man or woman of God sitting here and outside hearing me. You have seen visions of the great ministry that God is calling you into. But my brother and my sister, it will not just happen by running around and hoping and buying, finding how much a suit, a suit is and how much um, a good tailor can show you traditionals. That's not how to prepare for ministry. You prepare for ministry that way you won't last one year. I, I guarantee you. It's to stay in the secret place. Are we together now? And it will cost you pain. There are times that others will go ahead and while you want to join them, God says, you wait. And God will say, no, don't rob me. God, I want to enjoy life too. I'm a social person too. And God says, for two weeks, you are not going on Facebook. 
He said, God, did I do anything wrong? No. He says, it's my training for you. And he says, so God, just me, you now isolated me. And God says, I thought you said you want to be Esther. I thought you said you want to be Elijah. For three months, you are not going to watch a single movie. I said, ah, God, just when this film came out, that I, I, I will, allow me to watch it and I can sacrifice any other thing. It's not about the film. He's ascending the throne of your heart to make sure he becomes the epicenter of your all. Are we together now? There are times that you just receive your salary and God says, carry your salary on your way to household of David. Meet Pastor Sholan. So you say, no, this is a devil. God doesn't work like that. This has to be a spirit that is not of God. And God says, well, I've spoken once. It's your responsibility to hear twice. I've spoken. And you carry it and feel like a dead man while you are coming to church. Even while you are praying, as people are dancing, you are standing. Why am I doing this? Now, listen. You are laughing. But you see, it's because I'm acting it. That's why you are laughing. When it is happening in real life, you will not be laughing. It's a sacrifice. They say, sit down. You don't even know when they said you should sit down. You are standing. Somebody taps you and says, are you aware? They say, oh, I sit down. And then you carry that seat. And you are just angry at pastor while you are standing. God, this is a rich man. God, what are you doing to me like this? And you drop that seat. And don't even have a transport fare to go back. Don't be ashamed of your pain. Many of us think it's unusual. It's because many of us... Now, I'm speaking apostolically. I know that this is a church of great leadership. But many believers are not mentored properly to know that that pathway is normal. There's nothing unusual as fin and in finishing a service and not having transport back. Many people have paid that price. It's not an attack. Trek home. You are creating a track record. Listen, what looks like an injury today, tomorrow will become your symbol of honor. Don't be ashamed of your scars, that pain. Let no man trouble me, for I bear my body the mark of Christ. So tomorrow when someone sees you and says, This woman, you just got a, a rich man and just married, you say, You are joking. Let me show you the scar. Look at it. The scar of the vigil. The scar of the pain. Don't let the jeep fool you. I died. Do you have a track record in the spirit? Demons see it. Don't just stand up and say, in Jesus' name, go. You think they are fools? There is a scar, my brother. You don't just speak to a man and say, may your life change. Amen. And then his life changes. No. I'm being open and sincere with you tonight. There is a track record. The situation you are going through now, it looks like God is silent. Whereas heaven is cheering you. Write your story, my sister. Write your story, my brother. Let it be that once upon a time I trusted God. I had Gary no sugar. I still called on him. It looked like he didn't answer. And I said, Lord, whether you bless me or not, I love you. And heaven says, you passed the test. You passed the test. It was never about lack of sugar. It was about loving me with Gary or not. That means if I give you a jeep tomorrow, you can look at that jeep and say, Jeep, I loved God before you came. And don't you ever think the sound and the luxury behind you will distract me. There are many half big believers that are sweet here and there. One million naira comes and they drive God out and say, God, I need space. This one million is too big. Sorry, I have to evacuate you for a while. God says, I'm going. No problem. You must get to a point in your life where pain does not stop you. Please listen. Some of you, as I'm speaking now, only God knows the pain. You are seated here looking at me. But there are things you are going through on account of your faith. And the devil is already lying to you. You would have married since five years if it did not matter to marry a spiritual man. But God already warned you. The first guy that just strolled around, you had a dream. God said, be careful. I've already told you that the child that is coming out of you is not a child, it's a nation. So when you see all your friends getting married, you say, oh God, why are you cheating me like this? 
I would have had two children now. And you sit down and you cannot seek God. And God says, I will give you one child that is equal to a city. Believers, hear me. The waiting process of building a track record with God, Pastor, is the hardest phase in a believer's life. Because those are times when you will pray and it will look like God will not answer. You can sit down and malaria is killing you. And then while that is happening, sorry to use that term, someone comes and the Lord says, pray for the person. You will lay hands on the person and he falls under the anointing and leaves and says, my God, you are anointed while you are shaking like a leaf there. Say, Lord, where is the bomb in Gilead? And while he's talking, you are there. Your ego is on the line and you are saying, God, why won't you answer me? He's teaching you that it's not all about miracles. It's about your trusting him. You have to trust him beyond results. Are we together? While you are serving God, somebody will just send a nonsense text. I'm seeing you backsliding. Something is wrong with your spiritual life. You say, when I'm fasting, who is this? What, what demonic insight is this brother getting from where? And God allows it to see your spiritual stability. If that one text disturbs you, how will you manage the persecution of having a crowd? Don't be fooled to think everybody will love you. It's an exam you are writing. One person just sent a text, I'm disappointed. You didn't come for the meeting. You have not gone anywhere and you're already becoming proud. And you are there waiting on God. Say, God, what did I do wrong now? You that told me to wait, can't you explain to them that I'm waiting? And God keeps quiet. And just that little test, you can't pray again. I'm proud. Am I proud? And God says, Mr. Man, on your list of membership here, you wrote 10,000. And one text has already destabilized you. Yet you want to command 10,000 people. What happens when a whole family stands and says, we hate you, you are a devil? That means you won't preach again. So God is training you. You are looking at anointing, but God is saying no. Don't you know that greatness is a burden? Much more than the crown. It takes stamina to stand on that stage. If you are not strong, it can throw you. Success is like a knife. It depends on how you hold it. You can hold it in a way that it will kill you too. What happens when people look at you and say you are, you are a lousy lady? I thought you were an anointed person. Shame on you. You go back and say, shame on me. What am, I'm sorry, have you observed anything wrong with my life? <laughs> but when you have been trained in the spirit and you know him, anybody can look and say, okay, God bless you, it's your opinion. And thank God it's me and God that are needed for my success. Can you look at the storm and still smile? And they say, why are you smiling? They say, I have wired myself to smile regardless of what my eyes see. And they say, when did that happen? When I was trained. When I was trained. Pastor, have you seen people collapse because they stole their car? They, they wake up in the morning and stand in front of the garage. And say, no, no, it's a joke. Honey, where is this car? Say, so, I, I thought we were in the same room. I say, no, no, if, if it's a joke, stop it. My hard earned money, 15 million has disappeared like that. No, I won't let this happen. And the man is talking, and then you find out he's not coordinated again. The next thing, he has fallen. Let me tell you, I don't, I'm, I'm not, I know that we're human beings, we react in different ways, but that thing is a proof that that car is seated in a throne somewhere. I'm not saying to be, to be irresponsible over whatever God gives you, but to fall down because of metals, that's quite a level of degradation there. I will search for you and I will find you and I will find you with all my heart. I will lift my hands to you in worship And I will worship with all my heart Seeking his face will cost you a lot You will be misunderstood Your siblings, you see, every time you are serious with God 
it brings judgment to anybody who is not serious with God because your life is an epistle. So, usually they feel irritated. Let's assume, for instance, that these are brothers from the same family and this gentleman seems to be passionate about God. One day, this guy will talk to him and say, oh, please, don't insult us just because you are praying the other day. You see, it's already a reaction. It will pain you, let me tell you. Because people will look at you and say, prayer warrior, you have eaten and left plate here. You didn't even wash it. They will take little things and magnify. It's not about the plate. It's about the annoyance. They just found a plate as the scapegoat for expression. As if you are not human again. You just see a beautiful lady. Ah, this is a beautiful prayer warrior. I can't believe this. You mean it? As if you will never marry again. You, you see that kind of thing? There is a price to pay. But can you pay that price and remain? What of the attacks that come? We have spoken about physical things. Let me tell you. Every time the devil sees unusual passion, he comes to find out what is going on there. Because he knows that men have a level a nominal level he won't attack you because he knows that an attack will force you to be serious with god so he just measures and finds out that you are lower than the threshold level he leaves you there just be dancing around the things of god you are not serious today you pray next tomorrow you are not serious he will leave you so that that complacency will keep you there but the day he sees unusual prayer fasting praying a night vigil you are listening to a message this one happens you send a text to all certain friends and say sorry i need time with god the devil says mark this lady what is going on in her life this is a threat and all of a sudden the principalities and powers hear you while you pray lord take all of me i dedicate my life and they hear it and say make try to make this lady's life as miserable as possible and all of a sudden, a guy you have been with for four years now says, I'm tired of this, your church thing. My dear, I'm going to look for a correct wife, not a stupid girl like you. And you stand there and your humanity eats you up. And you are saying, Lord, but it's not fair. And God says, you just stay and watch what I make out of you. It takes a lot to be mighty and to be used by God to become a voice that a generation will hear it's not all about just mentorship and impartation it's a track record Jesus himself was on that cross not even Jesus escaped this naked 33 year old man and he said Eloi Eloi Labak uh, what, what is it Lama Sabatani why have you forsaken me? God, you forsook me. You turned your face away from me. Tempted like all men yet without sin. What is my crime? No, it's not a crime. I have to turn my face so that man can be able to look at me. It's a lonely path when you are getting to be great. Because there are times that God will isolate any human being that can help you because he wants to be your only help. So in a strange way, those who would have helped you all of a sudden, somebody you know that your tears, you just say, Uncle, help me, and in five minutes an alert comes. You now say, Uncle, help me. Plenty times, and no text returns. It's not always an attack. God is saying, you are in a season in your life where I need to teach you that I am supplier. There were times in my life, let me tell you, I did everything I knew to do. You see, this is, this is a revival conference. And so I'm, I'm, I'm opening up to you. You will see what God is doing in my life now and just think, oh, every, I just snap my fingers and say, Lord, where are you? He say, I'm here. It's not true. There were times I did everything I knew to do. Lord, where are you? Anytime you hear God silent, it's because He's carrying you. It's not because He has left you. Let me repeat. Anytime you call on him and it looks like he's silent, then you are not the one carrying yourself. He's holding you. Lord, where are you? Help me. Help me. 
Send bread, even if I'm not obeying this principle. Let me eat today, then you can continue teaching me tomorrow. And the heavens still remain closed. There is something that that tears must do to you. Because it is in your crying you gain compassion. Tomorrow now when you stand before a lady who says, Pastor, I've not eaten. There is a memory bank in your experience. You know what not eating. There are people who are too innocent to be used. There is no track record that relates to... And let me tell you another thing. The ministry God is sending you to will determine the experiences you must endure. You must take a sample from everything you will be saving men from. It must be captured in your experience. This is a painful revelation. Believe me. Pastor, I don't just work in the healing ministry today just because I'm anointed. I've had fungal infection that ate my head. For, from nowhere it just came. I said, what is all this nonsense? Many years ago. I was a very little boy. And that thing happened to me. Pastor, they stopped me from going to the dining hall to eat with other students. So I would stay alone. And sometimes there would not be water in that school. I would have to put my head in the rain outside. So that rain would just fall. So that I can rub a lotion. If I pay for people, or I buy maybe bonds or something, they won't collect. Except I pay and then they will pick. So today, when I see someone somewhere and the Lord opens my eyes to see that someone is in pain, the anointing, you see me point my hand there to that gentleman? You see, it's because of compassion. It's not just anointing. I'm not faking it. Oh, be healed just for the name. Because when God opens your eyes, you remember. When I stand and I see someone crying, there is something in my life to relate with. What do you have in your track record that can create? Compassion is not generic. To be kind-hearted doesn't mean it to be compassionate. There must be a history that can attach you to people's pain. Please, if you're a man of God here, hear me. Don't waste your pain. It's a track record. You will need it for the people God is sending you to. There are many people who want the anointing and don't have the time. Pastor, every time after our meeting, now it's, it's a unique model for us. I counsel people. I went, to, I went to bed yesterday. God is my witness. I think it was two, three. I returned home past one. Because people come from all over. Within and outside this nation. And the only time I have to see them is just that night. I have to see them. You must have compassion. When I go on stage by 6 or 6, that you're 7. And I stand there till 1. It's not enough to say I have anointing. Do you have the heart? Do you have an experience enough? To see a woman who stands and she's talking to you. And can't speak English well. I say, madam, so you are not even smart. Give me chance. I'm an educated person. It's compassion that will keep you to say, Madam, what can you speak? Yoruba, find somebody, interpret it. Don't try to struggle speaking English. I'm smart, but I'm not a fool. Speak what you can speak. I've been there. We do not have a high priest who cannot be touched with the feelings. It's the reason why many people are not anointed. They can't be touched. Sometimes this, this, our sense of over-civilization sometimes destroys us. It's wonderful, but be fair to people. A track record. That's why God called the solemn assembly here. Some of you probably got by track. Some of you right now, as you are sitting, your wallet is empty. Don't be ashamed. Don't be ashamed. Don't mind the people who laugh at you. They are needed in that history. Let them laugh. Mockery is a mystery. So that the day God blesses you, you can stand and look at someone who says, Sir, five naira, this is all I have. And you say, you were richer than me when God was training me. I say, you? This multi-millionaire. So there was a time you didn't have anything. And you say, look, let me lift the cloth I'm wearing. See the scar. 
let's not be ashamed of our scars. If we are ashamed of our scars, we are not going to help a generation because we will create a portrait that is not accurate. Many of you are surprised now as I tell you some of these things. Because in your mind, you see what God is doing in and through Apostle Joshua Selman. And you just believe this guy was uniquely fortunate. My God. When you look at me in the realm of the spirit, what you will see is blood dripping. Sacrifice. Sacrifice. Hallelujah. But hear me. When your heart becomes committed and drawn to God, then my brothers and my sisters, let me tell you this. The investment of the Spirit that will come upon your life as a reward for that sacrifice, nothing in this life, nothing in time can pay for it. You see, there are things when you have in this life you are afraid because it doesn't last. But when God gives you His presence, when God opens you up to His glory, when God opens your spirit to the realities of this kingdom, out of your sacrifice, come sir, one day, prayer and fasting like this is a moment where through all of these experiences, you get to a point where your flesh, are we together now? That flesh dies. The object of your fasting is Him. Here he comes before you. And he says, son, this is the final bus stop. All that you went through was to see me. Your mother did not see me. Your father did not see me. Finally, through all the hunger, listen to me, through all the disappointment, through all the delays, you have finally come to that place. This is the place of encounter that's what god is doing household of david hear me i'm activating something this is the place of surrender that's where he's leading you through your 30 days of prayer and fasting this is the place where my flesh gives way do to me what just live by default. Something must happen in your life to make you see the vanity of the flesh to live it. When people look at me and say, man of God, you are humble. I say, I'm not humble. I just passed through something and found out pride is no longer there. It's not something that you just say, I want to be humble. No, sir. When your ego is stung and stung again until there is nothing there, the name of that state is humility. Are we together? Yes. It is not natural to not laugh and jeer at others. 
it is it is it is um it is uh, i mean it is it's natural i meant to say it's natural to hate it's natural to fight people it's natural for jealousy all these attributes of the flesh so you pack them and say lord anoint me say no i don't anoint people like that it is fire first before the glory it is fire first before the glory please might take it higher for me it is fire first before the glory the, the listen 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 when there is a sacrifice then there is a fire then the glory fills the temple that's the pattern the sacrifice first then the fire that fire face of a believer's life you can't pray it away you can't fast it away you these are the kinds of cups that you can't say let it go off me uh -uh. you only take the grace to take it master can we can you grant that in this kingdom we sit at your left and right he said can you drink of my cup and be baptized with my baptism lord i want to have a mighty ministry and see the power of god heal the sick i want revelation and utterance he says can you pay the price it's not a gift this is the place of encounter not the silver please my please not the place i need them to work no 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 not just clash the silver let them understand what to do please Listen, brothers and sisters. I'm seeing the power of God touch some people here. Just like you. Please help them. I saw the angels of the Lord just moving there. We're going to pray shortly. You see, there is a track record that you must have in the spirit. There are many of us here, proud young men and women. I love you. What you are receiving tonight is discipleship. I love you. That's why you hear me talking. I, I don't resent the body. But there are many proud people who just believe on their own. Oh, no, I'm ready for ministry. I'm ready. Just because someone fell here and there in your meeting. My brother, there are other parameters that need to be in place. When you feel ready, it doesn't mean you are ready. It's one thing to feel ready, but it's another thing to be approved. 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 Where your flesh gives way. There are many people who need this work. Some of us here are looking at me. That's why we are praying. Lord, this jealousy. And God says, no. There has to be a circumcision. I love you and it's true I will anoint you. But have you noticed every time they clap for anybody who is not you, something, that something is what must be put on the threshold so that it be dealt with. This celebrity mentality, as wonderful as it is, you can't be great that way. Let the rest clap. God will allow you. But you who they are clapping for, you must remain on your knees while they clap. It is your most secure position. If you ever allow the clap to lift you up, you are going down. That is something you are trained in the secret place. He shows you. When people say all the things they say about me, I know how much all of you love me with all my heart. I love you too. But you see, every time you clap for me, I turn back and I say, Lord, help me. They are only clapping for me because I represent a face of an encounter to a generation. Keep me that way. Do you know how difficult it is to lie down and roll before God when the nations are clapping for you? When they are insulting you, there is a reason. But when they are clapping, retreats are times when our flesh is caught. There are some of you when 500,000 entered your hand, you didn't even tight. And then to your shock, you found out that for two weeks, you didn't even pray. You came late to church and early to leave. You greeted the other usher and said, don't shout at me, please. Everybody knew that 500,000 came. And yet you say, oh God, that 30 million. God said, 30, what? Respect money. No. I gave you 500,000. You misbehave as if you are not a child of God. There needs to be a circumcision. So that you can sit down. And when people know your true word, they say half of this was not told me. And you are this humble. 
Tonight, this is what we are going to do. There is a circumcision. Listen, listen, listen. It is always a sacrifice. Then the fire. Then the glory. Say it after me. The sacrifice. Then the fire. Then the glory. One more time. The sacrifice. Then the fire. Then the glory. It has nothing to do with ministry. Even in business, the sacrifice. Then the fire. It is at that point where the refiner's fire is roasting out everything that looks like flesh. Is the hardest part of your life. When you pass through the fire. When you walk through it. God, where are you? He says, remain there. Because that fire is building you. Through that fire, love is planted in you. Through that fire, you find out that hate goes away. And you, who someone will talk and say, I'm an angry person. Ask my mother, we are all like that. Pass through that fire and see what culture you come out of. As soon as you pass through that fire, someone will talk to you and say, stupid lady, you say, God bless you. You say, it's a joke. What happened? Fire. 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 What is the big deal about a man of God? Why should I respect him? I'm a man of God. He's a man of God too. Is it just because he's ahead of me? Please don't harass me to respect Pastor Shola. That statement is, is, a, is a spiritual medical condition. That statement, the ability to speak that arrogant is a sign. Anybody that knows God knows you are in trouble. But let the fire pass through. The next time you see Pastor, good afternoon. Ah, man of God, you just finished a conference. Yes, sir. Still, good afternoon. What happened? Fire did something to you. You can know people's spiritual states by their communication. It's a reflection of their spiritual understanding, which is a reflection of what the secret place has done in their lives or otherwise. Tonight, household of David, we are at the threshing floor of Nabal. And what God is going to do is that he will grant us grace. We are going to cry and say, Lord, I'm not afraid of the fire. Let that sacrifice, whatever it will take. Lord, I listen, listen. Sit down first. I'm establishing a prayer request. Lord, I used to love you. I don't know what happened to me. I'm surprised to see that my Bible is now a nuisance. I'm surprised to see that my prayer life when I was in the university, I was a prayer secretary. Lord, I don't know what is becoming of my life now. You need to help me. You see, let me tell you. When you are broken and contrite, you attract His presence. When you stand there feeling, I am okay. Retreats are not for sinners. They are for men who want more. There are times that you say, Lord, I thank you. But I am easily discouraged. The spirit of faith is not yet at work in me. Lord, grace. Every time I pray and I ask you to give me something. Every time pastor declares over my life once. I wait three, four days, no results. I'm discouraged. It means there is something I need to get. Hallelujah. There are many of you right now. You are about to make very costly decisions. Because what God told you, it looks like time is going. Please, Saul. We can't wait for Samuel. Why should we wait for what is special about Samuel? Bring me the objects of sacrifice. And you are about to lose the throne of your life. And God sent this retreat to say, stop. Before you ruin your destiny, return back to the sacred place. Show me a man that has missed it no matter how far. And can find his way to the secret place. I show you a man who will shoot out like a plant. Out of the earth again. Retreats are mysteries that create stability and sustainability in our Christian experience. Notice a man that is a man of the secret place. You will not see a challenge for too long in his life. You will see pride. You are noticing it grow. And then later you will see him for one week. He comes out and everything is gone. The refiner's fire. The refiner's fire. Fire is not just for deliverance alone. Fire is for refining. Refining. Lord, help me. I'm a man of God, but in the last one month, my appetite for women, I need help fast. Don't sit down and say, I'm all right until you die and the devil destroys you. Ah, this sister came for prayers and I, immediately I'm praying. My mind is going somewhere. Lord, I need help. And God says, you are welcome. Come. 
There is a place where men find refuge. It's better to be open in the secret place than to be disgraced openly by the devil. Whatever you tolerate for long in your life will be what will destroy you. I'm a man of God, but I slapped my wife. Sorry is not the answer. Go to the secret place. That I could slap her means I can stab her tomorrow if God does not help me. I slapped my husband and I said, it's, I'm human. You see, that means that humanity can, you can carry a knife and tear your husband into two and say, sorry, I'm human. We live in a world where we celebrate our humanity. People do foolish things and say we're human. It's true, we're humans. But what then is the advantage of the secret place? What then is the advantage of the presence of God? Please, let's love God, but let's not let westernization fool us. We do every kind of nonsense and say we are humans. I insult you. I say oh, I'm, I'm human. At the time I was insulting you, I was depressed. There are many worries in life. Is the worry unique to you? It is your spirituality that will help you. Otherwise, we'll make a mess of our destinies in the name of humanity. Is God speaking to someone tonight? Yes, sir. There are some of you retreats at times when God tells you you are running too fast. Did you hear what I'm saying? You are running too fast. There can be a man of God. You want this conference today. Tomorrow you want this. You want to build ten branches. Then at the same time you want to start TV ministry. Then at the same time and during the retreat, God will say, out of the ten points, only two are my will now. And he said, Lord, I thought we just danced that day. We thought we had you. He said, that's why you needed a retreat. Because that was not me. And you just caught. My people know, my, my leaders, sometimes we discuss a lot of things, very ambitious things we want to do. And then when they hear me quiet about it, they don't ask me again, sir, what of that? They already know what happened. Ah, we're going to do this. And then later they see me just come out and say, what were we discussing before? Let's, and I keep that thing quietly. They just know that uh, God has not spoken. I never do anything in my life until God speaks. I've seen the wastage and the vanity of moving when he's not leading you. The pain is that you must come back. God will not go and meet you there. He will wait and say, okay. Lord, where are you? Say, I'm here. Okay, so you come back. Listen, let me prove it to you. The first time God caught the rock for Moses. The second time he said, Moses, cut the rock and come and meet me where you met me there. Cut it by yourself with your hands. That memory will not allow you to crash it out of anger again. I did it free for you and you carried it and smashed it before you. And then turned it into powder. But now you use your hand and cut it. I don't know if there's someone here that is tired of your flesh interrupting the grace and the glory of God. You are one leg in today, one leg out. I know you don't like the message, but this is the price for the glory. The same way a doctor gives you a tablet, you say, doctor is bitter. I say, are you ready to be, to be fine? He say, yes, man. He say, swallow it. Swallow it quietly and you do it religiously for four or five days and you see that there's improvement. Tomorrow, when you stand in the television and people are watching you and saying, busy, this lady has risen this far, you will turn and say, household of David, thank you. Because it was in that meeting God taught me that pain is not demonic. It was in that meeting I learned you will never rise to a position of greatness with flesh being alive. Listen, you don't have to be a sinner for flesh to be there. You must crush it and trust God. Once you pamper the flesh, it will destroy you. I say it again. Once you pamper the flesh, man of God, once you pamper the flesh, it will tear you into pieces. You need to come before God. There's nothing to be ashamed of. Lord, I come before you. Help me. I'm in household of David. I'm anointed, it's true. But Lord, I need help fast. This is my appetite for money. I'm anointed, but I can still live me be. Once my account is 500,000, I'm already fidgeting. Once my account is 50,000, I can lie, I can change my message to raise money. It's a weakness. It can be nailed tonight so that you will come out refined as gold. Listen. Tonight I want you to open up your tendencies and vulnerabilities before God. And cry and say, Lord, please work on it now. So that it does not destroy me when a nation is looking up to me. 
It is not when a generation now looks at you, you represent an inspiration. This is my prayer many times when I'm in the secret place. I say, Lord, please, if there is anything in my life, work on it. I represent too much to a generation. There are too many people who are waiting on my walk with God to, to, to ginger them. What happens if all of these people just hear something tomorrow and they say, this person that has inspired, yes, they will still love you, but you have corrupted a track record. Someone looks, God uses your face to encourage someone to continue rising spiritually. There is a price. Don't ever pamper the flesh. I'm not condemning you. Kill it right from the inception when that seed is sown. Lust, pride, immorality, Name it. You don't like my, the message I'm preaching this night. Please like it. Please like it. In the name of Jesus, like it. This is the secret to power and influence and grace. More than you can imagine. Where your voice becomes like fire. It looks like God owes you his presence. You make one utterance and shift lives. It's not magic. It's not a gift. It's a track record. Hallelujah. We are going to pray tonight. There's a lot to pray about. There's a lot to pray. If you don't have a prayer point from everything I've said, you need to be born again. There is a serious, there is a call to a cry. When we cry, don't just wait for any usher to touch you because the ushers too are going to be crying and praying for their own lives. Are we together? In a few minutes, I'm going to be challenging us, the instrumentalists, to just, just soak in the atmosphere, just give us whatever it is. And everybody here is going to find a place, whether you are inside or outside. We are going to say, Lord, I come to you. I've been waiting for a man to drum this truth. I've known in my spirit that there is something wrong. But thank God, I've been waiting for a moment where someone will nail it on point. Thank you, Lord, for anointing Pastor Shola to organize this meeting. It's called a total experience. We have other dimensions we are going to talk about, but this is the foundation. Listen. Listen to me. Listen. My brothers and my sisters, I want you to hear me. I speak to you this way because I love you. There is no other way to be great in the kingdom. There is no shortcut. Are we together? In the next ten minutes, Praise the Lord. I know that those outside, there may not be a point of convenience. Even if you have to stand, you have to find a corner somewhere. Those inside here, you are just going to find a convenient corner. While the worship team, I mean the, the instrumentalists, just, just flow. You are going to cry before God. Please, lay your golden crown. I'm a man of God. Congratulations. But we are going to cry. I will join you, all of us together. We are going to cry before God and say, Lord, I can't lie again. I, you have to win this war tonight. You have to win this war tonight. Go ahead, find somewhere. Pray. Pray. Your holy prayer. Pray, forget about me. Living in me. You are my daily bread. You are my daily bread. Your very word spoken to me, and I I'm desperate for you. I'm 
upon the finish of our faith. Lord, let your refiner's fire prune this habit in my life, oh God. I've been crying for 30 days. I cry, I cry. man of God but I cry for help I know that I'm a woman of God but I cry for help I know I'm a businessman I've placed other things above you the truth is I love money more than you the truth is I love power more than you the truth is I love titles more than you You have my everything. You have my everything. You have my everything. You have my everything. Take all of me, all of me, Lord. You have my everything. Take all of me, all of me, Lord. You have my everything. Anoint my everything. Use my everything. I release my everything. Let it die tonight. 
I've been given an excuse that is my background. That's how we are in our family. But tonight, oh God, I release myself. I give up the lust. I give up the anger. I give up the jealousy. Lord, this is for real. I'm not just being emotional. I mean it. I mean it. I mean it. Lord, what is it in my life that I cannot hand over to you? Tonight I hand over. Is it the car? Is it the house? Is it my reputation? Is it my salary? Lord, what have I exalted above you? Is it ministry? Is it anointing? Is it business? Is it fame? Is it my accomplishment? We're rounding up. Just a few more minutes and we're done. Feel me up. That if there is anything in your life that is corrupting your Christian testimony, I stand for the God of heaven and I pray for you. This night, I separate you from it forever. Yeah. 
pornography, masturbation, immorality, pride, jealousy, flesh. In the name of Jesus, I separate you from it. I separate you from it. I separate you from it. Listen. If there is any appetite that is captured in your experience and is not of the Christ, you may have been tolerating it. You may not like it, but you have found out you are a slave to it. I stand before the God of heaven and in the name that is above all names, let the fire from heaven that separates, separate you right now. Hear me? Please just help them. I declare in the name that is above all names, whatever has taken the place of God in your life, it may be a good thing. It may even be something God gave you. But I'm stretching my hands now. That fire, as that fire comes upon you, tomorrow we'll have time to pray for the sick. But as that fire comes on you, it must find someone tonight. I declare, that fire reorders everything in your life and keeps God in His rightful position. Hear me? If there is anyone, especially you are part of this spiritual family, there is any association that you are part of that is strangling your Christian life. You love God, but your friends don't love God. And you, you come and receive prophecies here, but you go back and they rubbish your experience. In the name of Jesus, Shakatos Kapata, Lekete Prende Sekete Balakata, Shabras Kateba Shona Kasiana Hasa. In the name of Jesus, let there be a separation between you and those associations. Hallelujah. Listen. There are many of you, the grace to pray has gone. You are not bad. The grace just dried up. You cannot consciously, you don't love God enough to go for a retreat on your own. Church retreat, yes. Departmental retreat, yes. But, but that on your own, you say, I need God. I pray for you. Whatever must happen to you tonight, in the name of Jesus, the passion and it will infect you is like a cancer. I declare, may that hunger land upon your life now. The Holy Spirit used to wake you 12 o'clock, 1 o'clock, and you will pray, but something happened. And all of a sudden, His voice is not even clear. I decree and declare, in the mighty name of Jesus, the name that is above all names, I shift you back to that realm where you hear his voice. Listen. There are many of us I'm praying because your vulnerabilities are too much. We have to pray. Some of you are unusually emotional. It's not just biological. It's demonic. Listen. I want to pray for you. It's demonic. The devil plays it. Anything just goes. The self-restraint, the capacity to say no is not there. Anything can happen. Let me just preach my old school message tonight. That good old message that will pull everything until you carry the glory. That excessive emotional, you just say, oh, I think it's just, it's just me, it's just hormonal. It's just, no, no. If you allow your emotions, they will tear you into pieces and ruin your Christian experience. The world that is looking at you and looking up to you will not hear the fact that you were emotional. Therefore, in the name of Jesus, the grace, the stability of mind, of spirit, of emotions that will help you preserve the testimony of God upon your life, receive that grace right now. Receive that grace right now. Especially my adorable sisters. Dear sisters, hear me. 
that you are a woman does not mean that your emotions just go haywire and let the devil destroy you. I declare the stability of Deborah. Let it come upon you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let me give you a little assignment. We are back tomorrow. I know that many, the impartation... And please don't miss tomorrow's meeting. Even if you are not a member of Household of David, um, just make that sacrifice for tomorrow. It's my last session. It will be a waste to do an impartation and to pray and do all of these things. This is what you need. The assignment I'm giving you is please, take at least 15 minutes when you go back home. Any 15 minutes before morning, just take some time alone with God. Even if you are married, just pray for some 15 minutes and stay and trust God list out the things that must get out of your life and pray for that 15 minutes hold it as a request Lord this must leave Lord this must leave because the fire that is coming upon you is a fire that your generation will celebrate you for your wealth is in that fire your greatness is in that fire your glory is in that fire there is a prophetic word for this church, but I will say it tomorrow. There is something God has told me about House of David, Household of David. But tomorrow I will say it. I want to say it in the open and I want to say it on air. A shifting, I'm telling you, is coming to this church. It's true. It will be so strange. I'm not, I don't want to give you the details, but it will surprise you. In the name of Jesus Christ. The gentleman on white, my friend, lift your hands. I'm seeing an angel pouring something like oil on your head. That's what I'm seeing. I stretch my hands right now. In the name of Jesus, whatever that is to do in your life, I declare let it be done now. I'm not ministering this night. but The gentleman holding a red phone. The Lord is saying I should tell you that you are going through a season of pruning with him. That but after that pruning, your glory will shine. That's what God is saying. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. I want you to keep doing something for this man of God, our man of God, Apostle Joshua Salmon. And that is, I want you to keep on praying for him that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him, that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity. And then don't forget to like this video. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here. Don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing. Keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing Jesus. I'll see you again 